Domicile locked time, exactly. Home struck time. Time for the home struckening. I see you guys have been discussing the technicalities of this read through. Um, I'm assuming that that the uh, the acts are going to get longer for Act Six, if only because we have like four thousand pages to go. Um, yeah. You always read really hard when people say home struck internally. Yeah. Eh, it's just them not knowing. It's just them not knowing, you know? Like, it's, it's just one of those things like, oh, it's home stuck. And they're like, oh, okay, got you. Um, but let's see, let's see. Um, I did think about the fact that, like, it's really weird that Bro Strider has, a, like, a functional AI. Um, I guess, like, he could have just invented it. It's just really weird. That's, like, that's kind of some future tech we haven't seen outside of Suburb. So let's continue on. Act 6, Act 2. You are Jane Crocker again. You are dead. And once again, you have woken up on the moon of Prospect without any recollection of how you fell asleep. You think you were going outside to get the mail? You can't remember. The moon is presently eclipsing Skya. From your fanciful dream room atop your golden tower, you've seen many remarkable things in the clouds, things which you cannot explain. But against all better judgment, you have a feeling that what you are fondly regarding could very well be some sort of miracle. <laughs> The Miracle of a New Beginning. Oh, boy. This is a familiar panel. This is a familiar panel. Huh. The man that you guys are trying to convince to read. Exactly. Exactly. I am doing fine, Fink. I am doing fantastic. You just showing up playing some Mario... Yo, Mario Galaxy. Let's go. Yo, and I hope you enjoy watching Homestuck. It is a ride. Not the miracles. The last time we saw a miracle of a new beginning, literally half the cast died. So, your first time playing? Ooh, ooh, enjoy, enjoy. It is a super fun game. One of the better 3D Marios. Um, oh, hello. Hello, Prospidian or Dursite. That is our, our car carapace. Oh, nope, that's, that's an assassination. Well, fuck. Jane's just getting fucking bingo bongoed all over the place. What in the world? It's nice to meet you. Monka S. Yeah, exactly. Great. Welp, okay. This is how we're doing this, I guess. De- Okay. <laughs> I can't even be upset. Like, we spent like five seconds with her. Okay. Dead again. Another coffin clogger bites the dust. What the fuck? Why are you dead already? Oh my goodness. Um... It's current. Oh, referring to the uh, the hospital comic. It's currently ongoing, close to one thousand pages. It's a webcomic about Boog on the Boog Leech website, which is a site made by a guy who likes monsters. The comic is kind of strange and it takes place in the concept of a hospital. Well, okay, I'll look into it and think about it. I'll go. Let's see, Jack. For the love of God, we only read uh, pages seven. Can you calm the hell down with the stabbing? Yeah, F. Big F. Big F. Oh my goodness. Assuming that is Jack. Assuming that is Jack. It could be somebody else. But, uh, but I'm going to assume, I think assuming that is Jack is a pretty good assumption, given, uh, the history of things. This is, uh, this is quite a way to start the act, guys. Carcat did say Jack greets people by stabbing them. Oh yeah, you're right, though. You're right, though. I forgot about that. I forgot about that, because it has been a million years and a lot more characters have died since then. Huh, oh, gotta stop it with that. Hello, two down, two to go. Hey, buddy, you're being great. It's good to see you again. B. Jack Noir. Jane is too dead at the moment to be Jack Noir. Jack Noir just bees, just, just bees himself. Not even is, just bees himself instead. Okay, well, bye, Jane. Well, they're trying to cut off this, like, this game of Suburb before it starts. Get this shit out of the way. You're a busy bureaucrat. The clock is ticking and the time is dead, kids. The moment rapidly approaches. You're going to show these alabaster sons of bitches how a cold war is done. You can't wait to read it in their papers. The maid is dead. Our life is pathetic. Blah, blah, blah. Or some sort of monotone drivel. The maid, wait, the maid is dead and our life is pathetic. So that's interesting that they capitalize life. So I'm guessing that that means that Jane is made of something? M made of something? <laughs> made of blood at the, at, the, at the moment because, well, you guys saw. Um, no, wait, 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 wait. 
Yeah, made of life. We already knew that, that Jean was a hero of life, so that's made of life. Our, there we go. There we go. Let's see. Let's see. Bees. Better don't greet him where he's going to do the stabby things. Time is dead, kids is a great term. Yeah, no, definitely. Like, Jack has a way of a way of words. Made of doom because she's a corpse. <laughs> yikes. Big yikes. Or some such monotone dribble over her during one of the pointless weekly cadaver parades. You know how I'll be. There's no, be no mistake in it this time. No servant will discover the body and inform the queen that Prospect's remaining hero passed in her sleep peacefully and mysteriously. Because apparently that's what they did with Jake. When the clock strikes 12, no one in this wretched kingdom will have any doubt who's calling the shots here. You're going to bring the whole goddamn ball down. Contact droll. You touch base with the administration's top powder monkey, none other than the Dursite bumbler extraordinaire, the courtyard droll. You ask him if he's done rigging the tower to blow. He says, you betcha. You say, good, over. But he mutters something over the radio you don't quite catch. You say, what is it? He says, oh, nothing, boss. You say, oh, out with it. He asks, isn't this cheating assassinated the heroes like before the war's even really begun? You say, what do you care? You just followed the orders. He says, oh, of course, no question. He just thought it was against the rules or something. You say, it's all fair game now that the kingdom's under new management. That is interesting. Durst is under new management? That's, that's... What did the kids do to fuck this session? What did the kids do when they created this universe? How do how why, how do they bad like fuck up the session this badly? What do you make now of the sentence the Prosperians had about uh, treating Jake's uh, death? If I remembered that, because it was a week ago. Oh, actually, I wrote it down. Like the it was the page is dead. Um, God, I don't remember the rest of it. I probably should have written down the whole quote. Uh, it probably, it probably had a, had a clue to his, uh, his thing. Hello, hello! How are you doing today, Cloud? They pirated Suburban, now it's full of viruses. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, God. I mean, like, I'm just imagining it, like, full of frogs. Like, just, like, virus-ridden frogs. I, but yeah, oh, God, I just don't remember what the other line of it was. I think everybody was saying what, what, uh what Jake's uh, aspect was, and I didn't write it down because I was like, okay, whatever. You can quote it if I want. Sure, sure, if you've got it. I don't mind. Like, let's see. I appreciate you asking, honestly. I, I very much appreciate that. Uh, let's see. There was a new manager. The new boss ain't opposed to taking some shrewd tactical shortcuts. You like the cut of her jib. He says he supposes she, uh, he can't complain. Her policy towards elaborate hats seems to be as lenient as the old queen's. You, you say, will you shut up about the hats? He says it's probably because she wears the most grand and luxurious fluffy hat he's ever seen. You say you don't think that's a hat. You think it's something called hair. He says, oh. You now say, uh, you say, now quit all the yapping and follow your damn orders. He says, okay, but it just feels wrong. You say, what does? He says, you don't know, it's just something about feeding the poor sleeping boy all those deadly peanuts just felt wrong. You say, you don't care if it feels like a fucking full body massage, just get the bombs ready to blow over and out. Wait, fed him what? Okay, so they killed Jake by feeding him deadly peanuts? The page is dead, our hope is lost. Gotcha. Gotcha, yeah, so that does confirm page of hope. I got you, thank you. Which everybody was saying in chat. Elaborate hats, you write though. You write though, and also has hair? Has hair? That's really worrisome. Huh. You love conversations between care, uh, care patients? Yeah, no, it's fun. It's, it's got a different feel to it, you know what I mean? It, it, it's got that good, good feel. Kind of like wacky. Oh my god. Huh. Huh. Okay, can, that's quite the elaborate hat there. It took me a while to find to find CD's head. Oh my god. You love this callback to Act 1 2 with the elaborate hats? Or, uh... Oh man, the loosest bed still. He says the intelligent report he had said the kids wouldn't take well to peanuts, so he snuck in there with a whole bag of them, you know, like the kind from circuses. So Jake has a peanut allergy? He says that he ate most of them because they were delicious, and as far as he knows, they aren't poisonous to most everybody else. But he did save a few to get the job done, because he is a professional who always carries out his orders. It's not easy feeding a sleeping boy some peanuts, he says. He says he has to work extra hard to put them in his mouth, and then he uses his hands to make him chew up the nuts. Deadly peanuts, severely allergic. Yikes. Yikes. Oh, a severe peanut allergy is a terrible affliction to cope with. 
And since June and Jake are genetically similar, oh, I got you. Wow, that is a really like long throwback. I don't, I didn't even remember that June had a peanut allergy. Wow, that is something else. God damn it, Homestuck. Why you gotta pull up like the most throwaway lines and make them plot points? But the mission accomplished nonetheless, he tells you. You should be pleased to know that those nuts were super deadly. Though to be fair, he doesn't know if he died from the poison or just choked on a bunch of barely chewed peanut bits. You know what else is super deadly, you say? Knives. Sharp, deadly knives you stick in people's soft torsos to make them bleed until they die. He doesn't have anything to say to that. I have to stop. You say, forget it. What's done is done. The Prosbidian heroes are dead, and that's all that matters. Just be ready to detonate at the appointed time. He says, Roger that, but wonders if there's any more orders after that. Yes, what about the other two? The ones on your on our moon? And most importantly, is there any particular snack that is poisonous to them? You say, forget about those two. They're much trickier to deal with. You've got the dignitary working on it now. You'll get a report from him as soon as you return. You wouldn't want to have even bothered in the first place, but you wanted to make the trip personally and stick it to these self-righteous sky bathing goody-two-shoes yourself. Hang on, something's happening here. You gotta go. If you, if you have a kid with a peanut allergy, it doesn't mean you have one. But for all we know, every kid at Homestuck is allergic to peanuts. That's fair. Thank you for the hydrate. Well, at least a peanut allergy death wouldn't count as just or heroic. We don't know. What if, what if, what if June took a peanut for, uh, for another character? Like, they threw a peanut, and then June was like, um, um. That, that could be heroic, right? Huh. Huh. See, inspect torso. Huh? All oh, this can't be good. You better hit the road and blow this joint before the dead broad does some sort of lifey thing. That's true. Made of life maybe can't die that easily, one would hope. Hit hit road, blow joint. Easy transportalizer. Oh, here we go. A new beginning. Let's go. Ball drop. I'm gonna wait till this ticks down. See if there's anything special here. Probably not. Probably just, yeah, ball drop. Boom! Oh, that's the ball that they were referring to. Huh. Huh. Let's see, let's see. Happy New Year 2012. Is that when this page came out? Gotcha. Gotcha. That is actually really clever. That's very clever. Let's see, let's see. Zoom, drop, boom, bounce. <laughs> I like this little dude right here. It's just like, but my new year kiss. Like, he's just like, no, no, the entire time. And the last time a tower ball dropped uh, Jade's lad, it was new year 2011. Oh, I didn't know. I didn't realize. Oh, oh, <laughs> is this just a layer? Praise the sun. It's so glorious. You're right, though. You're right, though. I like that interpretation better. Boing, boing, boing. Boing, boing. Oh, now we're into Act 6, Act 2. Oh, okay. Life bomb? Hello. Wait, what? 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 Okay, to be fair, it did not say dead before. It just exploded. It always says dead when a character is dead to, to confirm. What does the New Year have to do with falling spheres anyway? <laughs> That's... <laughs> what is the um, the origin of dropping the ball in, in Times Square? What is it? It ain't Act 6, 2, Act 2 until it says Act 6, Act 2. You're right, Reaver Grism. Hey, Heterosapiens, what's up? How are you doing? I actually don't know what the origins are to that, Algot. You love the sound effects? Thank you, thank you. My mouth was born with them. What the heck just happened? Now you remember. The mailbox was booby-tracked, but you survived somehow and got knocked out because, I guess, life or somebody helped you? How'd you get all the way over here? Dad seems just as dumbfounded as you are and more than a little distraught. Did Lil Seb whisk you away in the nick of time? Can that little bunny really move that fast? Where is he? You suppose you should let Dad know that you're okay? Oh! Oh! Okay! Oh no! I mean that's good, but 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 but, but we have we have we have Bet Cat. We have Cat Guardian. Oh my goodness! Oh. 
Let's say. Let's see. Oh, that's true. I remember Kanaya. That's a, that's a fair point, Alga. Ooh, big cat. I like that cat. You suppose you should let your dad know you're okay, but it's been so long since you enjoyed a massive pinkster's gambit in an exchange with an old man. It's hard not to bask in it, if only for a few seconds. That's not... That's not a prankster's gambit! No, letting him think that his daughter died is not a prankster's gambit! Go over there! Let him know you're okay, you sick fuck! What is wrong with you, Jane? Oh. You will never understand uh, how what color our names are is decided? Me either, honestly. Me either. Just the prank, bro! Oh, no! Jane is the most evil character! Oh, it's the god cat again! I guess that explains- How can Jane be so- what? How can Jane be so, like, um, condescending and, um, um, what's the word? Skeptical of everybody else's weird shenanigans like time travel and weird, like, trolley business with Lond and, like, all this nonsense. And then be like, oh, yeah, I have a god cat that chills out with me. Do you remember in Act 4, Act in 6 Ascent, how Rose has the word G-cat all over her room in, 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 in uh... Endurance, well, that's the G cat. I, hmm, her, her. To be fair, all cats are gods? Indeed. Indeed. She has meow. Yeah, like, I thought she had meow. Um, so I, maybe I'm misremembering? I thought she just had meow because that was what uh, Jasper's whispered to her. Hmm. I don't know. The, the genetic, the genetic code stuff, uh, gets kind of like, I, I needed I needed to pay more attention and those notes are super old when I wrote down the genetic code stuff. Let's see. Yeah, they translated the GCAT as the base pairs of DNA. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Well, interesting. You guess that explains it. Just to look at a, at a aloof little bastard. He doesn't give a shit about anything, does he? You guys should feel grateful toward him for saving your life, but you know he's just as likely to rescue you from an explosion as he has to randomly teleport you across town, forcing you to call your dad and ask for a ride home, while you spend all day standing in some random field in the pouring rain, while you wait for hours for your dad to come and pick you up after he gets lost because he plugged the wrong place into Google Maps. Call G-Cat down from the tree. Yeah, G-Cat, there we go. Even if you were inclined to do that, he wouldn't have responded to the name. You're pretty sure he doesn't have a name. You and your friends just call him G-Cat for lack of anything else to call him. Everybody has opinions, but nobody can agree on a good name. You think he probably doesn't want a name. He's just a, a feisty stray who likes to meddle with your life, then vanish for weeks at a time. Oh, it looks like the jig is up. Yet again. Is the jig ever anywhere but up? That's what you want to know. Sometimes the jig is down. Sometimes it's to the left. Sometimes it's back in time. You feel bad about leaving him in suspense for even a moment. Your gambit gets totally rocked by a guilty conscience. Yeah, because that's fucked up. That's fucked up. Why would you let your father think that he was die? That that you were dead? Come on now. What is wrong with Jane? Jane Jane is a psychopath. Jane is a sociopath. I do <laughs> worst worst kid so far. Worst kid just for that. He tells you to get inside this is this instant. Jane do be nutty. Yeah, like, come on. You get inside this instant and march back up to your bedroom. Dad didn't say much, but it's a safe bet you are now perma-grounded for life. You hear a loud thump just outside your door. Let's see. <laughs> apparently, apparently Dad Crocker could just, boom, drop a tub. <laughs> yo, yo, I feel like this is a callback to uh, Act 1 as well. Was it, was it the tub or the toilet that kept getting thrown around by Rose uh, in, in June's room? Don't disobey best dad, Jane. Don't do it. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, okay, it was an Act 1 callback. Just rip the tub up to crown her. Contact, contact BFFC. Well, as long as you're getting done, you're done. You got done paying the piper. You might as well get busy eating all the goddamn crow. So, oh, so much stuff is gathered on your plate. She appears to be online now. It seems like she sent you the hacked file while you were away. Let's see. Okay, I gotta remember the names. I gotta remember the voices. I gotta remember the voices, guys, because we changed up the voices at the last second last stream. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Hey, uh huh. Rolol? Okay. We're, like, slowly building up the new Lalonde's name. Like, so it's it's R-O something Lalonde. It's the Rolol. That, that it, it has... 
<laughs> I know you're joking a bit, re recursive, but yikes. It's Rose, duh? Yeah, no, definitely, clearly. Rose 2, Lalon 2.0. Roll, 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 roll. Oh my god, guys. I want to know. I want to know the new kids' names. I want to know the new kids' names. I'm pretty sure one of them. I'm trying to remember. Actually, I shouldn't even. Like, I vaguely remember somebody saying a name and, like, uh, chat being like, don't read that. So I'm probably just not going to think about it and try to remember it too much because it was probably one of these kids' names if I had to guess. But I don't remember what it was. Hey, um, Rolal. Oops, sorry, was having important chats. Oh, gosh, was that the voice I did? Oh, with whom? Uh, yet another unintelligible fucking bachelor. Who else I have to talk to? Yeah, um, which one precisely? Die Stri Oh, oh, I actually know that name now. I think that actually made me remember the name. Rose the sequel of Lond. Yeah, Die Strider. Insmufferable prick, motherfucker. How, is she more drunk now? Oh, wow. Extra dinner. <laughs> Yum. By the way, do you understand why you hate the whole June thing that is never even canonically mentioned once and their names are already similar enough as it is? Uh, I understand why having, like, a million J names might be frustrating. I'm not going to change what I'm doing, though. Because word of author is is going to be canon for the future from what i understand but let's see present tense drinking ah you're right you're right drinking <laughs> if the chat and surplus dinners were truly important i would i i wouldn't want to interrupt oh wait i went kind of a bit rosish there of course not just the usual biz chats with you always get precedence anyway anyway this is more of you giving me shit about not believing all my sick true facts Actually, that's what I wanted to talk with you about. I see. Go on. Let's see, let's see. You see, I was just the target of another assassination attempt. Fuck! <laughs> wait, wait, was this an attempt to write fuck? Is that why there's the star there? Or was that just hitting the wrong? <laughs> I, I choose to believe that, th that this was Rolalon's uh, attempt to write fuck. That just went terribly wrong. Let's see. Jake Carcat Cannon? That sounds like a cursed ship if I ever heard one. Two, in fact. One here in the real world, as I was attempted to retrieve the mail. Luckily, it was sorted by a certain cat who shall remain nameless. <laughs> oh, man. God, cat. I'm good. No, wait. God was right. Fuck it. Both spellings are true. <laughs> okay. But in the process of being rescued from the explosion, I was knocked unconscious. And in my dream, I was another assassination attempt. One that I believe was successful. Oh. I'm being convinced that our dream selves are being picked off by violent hooligans. Shit, hooligans. Yes, but I think you mean batter witch thugs. Perhaps the one who has accosted me was a knife-wielding lunatic, and it's reasonable to deduce that the same forces were responsible for Jake's death on Prospect as well. It looks like the, that we are in the clutches of an actual caper, a real-life mystery, which under different circumstances would be quite exciting. But the truth is, I think we are all in great danger. Well, fuck. I guess it's time to take this shit up to red alert to where it's been for, like, fucking ever, Jane. Yeah, yeah, but that, that wasn't all that there was to the dream. Shortly before I was stabbed, I had a lo rather long gander at Skaya. A gander, you say? I don't know why she's significantly less drunk now. Just, I guess, the assassination attempt. Hmm. Let's see, let's see. According to Hussy, reality bends for the sake of a joke. Huh. And so by that logic, Arati could suddenly gain huge boots just for a big titty goth GF goth. Huh. Arati is ex-goth, though. <laughs> oh my god. She's only goth when she's dead goth as it goes. Interesting interpretations. Yes, how good a gander? I would say a pretty substantial gander. Okay, and during this totally massive gander you snagged, what did you see? I saw things in the clouds. Things. Yes, things. What things? Things happening in the future, I think. Many events pertaining to us, all of us, and other people I didn't recognize. It was a bit overwhelming. It made me feel small, insignificant, relative to whatever it is we're about to involve ourselves with. And honestly, it made me feel pretty foolish, too. Foolish? Why foofish? <laughs> I began to wonder why I had ever had the audacity to think I might know much of anything about the world we live in or the journey we're about to take, or to think I could ever rule anything out. I have a feeling that whatever I saw, it means you've been telling the truth all along. About everything. I'm starting to feel like a complete idiot for doubting you. Aw, oh, man. 
I've been one great big horse's caboose, and I think you owe, you're owed an apology. Do you think you can forgive me? Jane, damn, you're making me feel like shit here. Why? Uh, no reason, just, uh, hey, did you download the game file I sent you? I did, and at this point, I guess I have no choice but to use it. I guess you're a step ahead of me yet again. Why? Because the one in the mail detonated in my most recent assassination attempt. What? Oh, fuck those hacks. The old exploding game trick, which would stoop to such a lowbrow shenanigans like that. So many sweet typos. That witch just makes me fuck kink fruious some tights. Oh, yes, the tactic was quite underhanded, yes. Yeah, so, uh, what were we talking about again? Sorry, I'm just so worked up over it. I don't blame you. Where, were, where we were, by my estimation, was a place wherein I was about to attempt to uh, awkwardly attempt to swallow a helping of humble pie to somehow make it up to you for my years of stubborn mistrust. This is a long tester log, guys. This is a very long tester log. Your stream frozen, you got an ad again, epic. Blame Twitch. Blame Twitch, because they like popping ads on everybody. Yeah, no, like, even if you select, like, hey, don't have ads in the middle of my stream, Twitch just says, lol, okay, we're going to do it anyway now. Like, actual official announcement from them. Aradia may not be your queen, but you still think she's great? Aradia is lovely. I fucking love Aradia. Also, Twitch raids are whacked out now, too. If you have a raid under a certain size, it doesn't even, like, trip the notifications. Like, even in chat, which is kind of borked. You love how the other lawn uh, writes like you when you try to English. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, I, I think your English is pretty good, Bug. Like, I, I, I can't say that there's too many occasions where I haven't been able to understand you. But that might be due to over-diligence on your part. Let's see. Hey, Gene, wasn't that a bunch of split infin inf infinitives? What? Split. To awkwardly attempt to somehow make it up. Oh, lol, <laughs> so busted. Oh gosh, what a doofus. You see, I clearly don't have all the answers. I really have some nerve challenging anyone on practically any subject. Don't be your own, yourself up too bad. We both know that rule is bullshit anyway. You hold yourself to too high a standard and those standards kind of leak out and start getting applied to other people, I guess, sometimes. You really don't have to apologize, Janie, or eat a humble pip or anything, or anything. All you've got to do is maybe not be such a huge tight ass all the time. That's fair. I would still like to make a gesture, even if it's one partially motivated by self-interest, seeing as I clearly have much to learn. I would like to give you a free pass for a day. It is good for 24 solid hours of absolute credulity from your best friend. Hmm. Okay, waiting for you to say what you're exactly talking about. It means that starting now, whenever whatever you tell me, I will have to believe you. I promise. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, um, are you there, Ro? Because I use, like, shortened nicknames to avoid letting people know what the kitten characters' new names are for some reason. This is long. You haven't seen a long tester log yet? <laughs> I mean, that's fair. No, that's fair. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. We, I see some deleted messages. I see deleted messages. Here we go. Here we go. The spoilers are out in full force. Let's go. You like the relationship between these two? I do too, though it's definitely feeling, um, so far the new kids, I feel like their relationships are a little bit more ham-fisted, but that just might be like growing pains, like getting to know them. You know what I mean? Just one deleted message because you were being clever. <laughs> gotcha. Oh, uh, wait. <laughs> Shh. This is a dramatic pause. Calm your tits. Oh, um, how exactly how dramatic are we talking here? Like, should I go retrieve a magazine, or... Really? <sighs> here we go, here we go. Hello. What? Stop drinking! Stop being so drunk. Okay, then, what do you want me to say? For you to auto-believe him. Um, everything, I guess? I'd like to get completely up to speed if possible. Yeah, but I'm, I'm pretty sure I said everything, so you want me just to say it all again, or... Some reiteration certainly wouldn't hurt, but this time I won't work so hard to sift through the fanatical from the plausible. So, okay, so, like, stuff I said about my mom, or... Okay, sure. Okay, so, for starters, she really is a notable author, you know? Oh, I know that. That's always something I had trouble. I had no trouble believing, considering the public documentation even reclusive celebrities receive, and frankly, the family resemblance is obvious. Mm-hmm. Anyway, it would be disingenuous if I found your relation far-fetched, since we're all apparently related to noteworthy people. It's just one of those funny things. Being drunk is fun, though. Ask Gamzee. He'll agree. Hmm. Her. 
By the way, the Ionian universe with inverted species, what color of blood would the origin would the origin four kids have? Wait. In a universe with the inverted species, what color Oh, oh, you're saying like if the Earth kids were trolls. Like is that what you're asking? If if the if the Earth kids were trolls, what color would they be? What color would their blood be? Like we're on the hema spectrum, is that what you're saying? I'm not quite I, I I'm not quite sure. Yeah, that's what you're saying? Okay, cool, cool. Oh, uh, that's an interesting question. That is an interesting question. I think June would be a blue blood. Well, okay, that's not true. The reason I think June would be a blue blood, I actually think June would be closest to Gamzee's uh, color, which was like uh, purple, right? I had it written down somewhere. Um, mainly because I imagine that June would be high on the Hema spectrum, but then not treat it as anything. Hey, the noise. Um, I think that, um, let's see. Who would be the biggest dick? June down with the clown? <laughs> no, no. I don't want to imagine June going crazy, but I think that might be just be a Gamzee thing. Um, so that's a very hard one for, it's very hard for uh, Dave and um, I think Jade would be a lower blood. I, I don't remember the actual like, stratification of all of them. I don't know if Jade would be a rust blood. I don't think that's the case, but I have a feeling just based on it that like Jade would be a lower blood that everyone starts to love anyway, if that makes sense. The thing about trolls versus humans is that humans don't live in a legally enforced caste system. Yeah, that's the thing like, uh, huh. Hmm. Probably Rose would be a blue blood because all of the blue bloods that I recall, let me see, let me double check. All the blue bloods have very violent, destructive tendencies, and Rose literally wanted to destroy Suburb. Um, it's implied that the inherent violence of a troll increases as you go up the Hema spectrum. It is, it is, it is. The reason why picking blood colors just based on which troll they are most like, you guess? Interesting. So, like, I don't know. The thing about June is, like, I, I could see June going fucking bad shit with the Windy thing. You love that the way that Gamzee Snap is foreshadowed by that fact, though? Yeah. No, it's really good. It's really good. Blood types don't directly affect personalities, though, just culture, which then affects personality? Hmm. Hmm. I guess it's technically true based on what we know about why the scratch and the troll session happened. Um, because it was specifically to build a cultural, like, a, a, a cultural, like, society, a society that, um, uh, inherit, like, that put violent, uh, violence there. Jay would totally be either Olive or Fuchsia. I don't remember. I need to, I need to find out the stratification, and I don't know if it's safe to look me, to look it up. So... Let me think on that for a bit. Let me think on that for a bit before I give you, like, my conclusive, like, answer, so to speak. It's definitely not safe to look it up. That's a damn shame. You don't understand why so many people uh, hate Aradan Zen? Uh, I mean, being vi violent wasn't his fault. I mean, be being being violent was definitely his fault. He chose to be violent and he relished it. Theft wasn't violent, yeah. Yeah, it was definitely a cultural thing. Theft, Theft though, at being at the top, like top ish of the ch food chain, had the power and influence to subvert the expectations of those around her. If that makes sense, it's nature versus nurture. Yeah, I do think Theft was an exception, but I don't think it's because like the blood informs it. I think it's because when when you are that high up, you don't have the pressure from the top as much. You yeah, know, hashtag fuck Aridan, guys. Like, I can't, I can't, I can't make any like sort of really sympathy for Aridan. Um, I understand why he wanted to like go and turn and like go with Jack because he thought it was the only way. But no, Aridan like betraying all of his friends and killing them. No, that was fun. destroying his entire race by destroying the Matriorb was super fucked. So. Theft had friends while every troll avoided Aridan. I mean, true, true, but I think that can explain things. It doesn't. Um, it doesn't excuse it. But let's see. Let's see. Um. Yeah. 
True that, then what else can I talk about? Ooh, like her occult magics and stuff. Because I don't know a whole lot about the magics besides the fact that they're all real as shit can get. Maybe we should start at the very beginning. Okay, but the beginning was a heck of a long time ago. Do you remember around the when we first started talking? Mm-hmm. And you claimed you were the one making my pumpkins disappear? <laughs> yeah. You later proceeded to prove to me that you what you were saying was true, but none of your attempts thereafter would ever bear any fruit, pardon the pun. Okay, but it ain't pardoned because a pumpkin ain't even a fruit. It's a big orange porch thing for Halloween numbnuts. Yeah, I know what pumpkins are. It's a joke, silly. What I'm trying to say is, in thinking back to those days when you couldn't verify your claims, it made me think the whole thing was a big root. And I think this has unfortunately began a pattern of mistrust. It was always hard to rule out the possibility that you could be joking about other things as well. Yeah, but it's not my fault. I mean, a purification tech is notoriously unreliable. Remember, I explained this. I can't just always purify stuff from you anytime I want. I can only take stuff I'm allowed to, which is pretty much random, like stuff being taken. I'd be messing with the timeline because that stuff is supposed to be there and serve some functionality as not served yet. So most of the time, I try to, all I try to do is get slime on my end. But pumpkins, for some reason, are a little easier to take. I don't know why. Like, they're specifically and arbitrarily unhinged from space-time is spooky is spooky pumpkins are specifically and arbitrarily unhinged from space-time interesting interesting that's interesting though real quick real quick let me um let me move over hello face cam only hello 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 i need to turn off my steam so that it does not interrupt our streams there we go Okay, there we go. There, nope, nope, nope. It's taking 10 years. Okay, we're good now. We're good now. Let's see. Let's see. The question here lies in, you can't excuse uh, Aridan's actions, but what about Gamzee's? I want to spend more time with uh, post Freak Out Gamzee before I really dive into that to see if we can talk with him, if we can find out some of the reasoning, stuff like that. So I am intentionally diverting that topic to later let's see what pumpkin indeed can i have the matri over in a Silidex? clearly meaning it clearly has a code i mean that's fair but uh they specifically mentioned that the matri orb costs too much grist to duplicate but they can always get more grist like if that isn't the while it makes it very difficult to revitalize race it doesn't mean it's impossible but i do but it is a limitation right now um but Either way, he did definitely destroy something that gave them the opportunity to revitalize their race at the moment, which is hashtag fucked. So, also, really important thing here, why does New Lalonde have access to a purification technology? Before Suburb starts... Mm, I'm getting some weird vibes here. I'm getting some weird vibes. Dave could always buy more from the uh, from 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 the low cast. Hmm. Hmm. He did achieve his dream of killing all the land dwellers, though. He did. He did. He he he, he ground on that uh, on that mission. He got that bread. He achieved his dreams, and then he died. Like honestly, like he has the kind of life everybody wishes they could live. But, um, so, this is interesting, though, the fact that she has any access to a purification tech. What it could imply is that, is it possible that, so that's two, two characters that have tech that is a bit uncommon for th this time. And to be fair, this, the universe is kind of shifted by the whole Betty Crocker being a megacorp, but... Hmm. What I'm thinking is, I'm wondering, so remember how once upon a time, J, uh, Jade had transportalization tech as part of her daily life? That's true, though. That's true. That's fair. Huh. Huh. Hmm. Interesting. That's fair. I was thinking maybe this is actually doing what I thought was happening with Jade in Act 1, where I thought Jade was from the future. Maybe, maybe Lalonde is from the future. But that's true. Jade did have transportalization tech in the same time. So, 
Yeah, yeah, the lab did have an purifier. You're right, though. You're right. These are all details that I'm thinking about, so maybe, maybe I'm off base there. I guess technically it existed in that time, even if it wasn't common. And this is a Lalonde, so this should be fine. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely, guys. Absolutely. I couldn't begin to explain the science behind such technology either, but I guess the important thing is, regardless of how or why it works, this is a story you continue to stand by. That is, you're take, still taking credit for the mysterious disappearance of all those pumpkins I grew years ago. <laughs> yeah, I so gonked your gourds, Jane. Did you gank them when my gourd was down? Yes, yes, I did exactly that. Snatched your patch, sucker. <laughs> Very well, then I believe that is what happened. That's all I'm trying to say here. Oh, so, okay, you believe that. Now what? Now, nothing really. You may continue to tell me anything you would like with the confidence that I won't doubt you. So by all means, go ahead. Okay, so got it, Jane. What's it feel like to get stabbed by the bad guy? Oh, come on, huh? That's a question. Yeah, so? It's not any sort of revelation or statement for me to take at face value. Dad, burn it, this isn't that difficult. And for the record, it's not great. What's not? Getting stabbed by a bad guy. It isn't all that peachy. Yeah, I bet. Must have sucked. Or dream sucked. I don't know. So you're not in the mood to tell me things. No, I am. I'm psyched about you wanting to believe me and all. But part of me still feels like I should prove it. Like I tried to once. And it was just frustrating. I mean, I'm a scientist. I should be able to prove my shit. Like subject my claims to the fucking madrigogs. Oh, uh, um, madrigogs? Mad riggers. Okay. You know what I mean? I was thinking, like, the matro orb, but I was like, mm, we already know Rose fucked the troll. This could be more stuff. Let's see. You know he could purposely create doom timelines and then the doom days go back and give all grits to his past selves that's duplicating it all? Hmm. Huh. I mean, like, I, I have a feeling that the, uh, I have a feeling that the trolls found a way to duplicate their race with, uh, maybe another species here in the reality. So I don't think it's gonna be an issue in the end. Yeah, I mean, trust between friends is sweet and everything, but I don't know if I want to be the, uh, repiant of, like, a buttload of pity believings. It's not pity, it's more like a gesture I'm trying to make, or maybe that's not quite right. It has more to do with setting things right for myself than it does making it up to you. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, that's pretty, like, that's pretty, like, kind of shitty. Why is Jane really shitty <laughs> at this? Huh. More dead Daves. Rose fucked a troll. Hashtag what I believe. And I have a feeling, I hope I know which troll it is because they are super cute together. Well, while playing Suburb, we can see a curse so maybe they just copy-paste a bunch of Oh, God. <laughs> just copy-paste Daves all over the place. It's fine. Shoot, I'm doing such a terrible job at explaining. No, I think you actually covered the, the thing. Patiently sips beverage. Bottom line is, I want to believe the things you say now. That's all you need to know. Okay, that's good. I want that too, but I still want to prove it irregardlessly. Oh, God, that word. Irregardlessly. Shudders uncontrollably at word usage. Whoops, sorry. I still, I want to prove it irregardlessly. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I love Lalonde. All fixed. That as fuck. So, you down for one last try? Sure. Okay, let's get busy. So what do you want me to dis disappearify? We also see a cursor before suburb. Oh yeah, that's true, that's true. God fucking damn it, no, that was a beautiful pun. It was a beautiful pun. I don't know, the baking chest maybe? Too big, I got size restrictions here. Bigger stuff takes different, huge amounts of stuff to swipe. So this gizmo I has has built in size cap. Like something as big as you, for instance, I can't take. Believe me, I've tried. Aw, that's sweet of you, I guess. Was toad sweet of me to try and steal you for the hangouts, but it didn't work because of bulb shit. I can't take that stuff, or but I can take stuff somewhat smaller. What are the restrictions? Just dump your shit on the floor. Just tell me, tell me everything that's there. Empty silly decks. Well, what immediately catches my attention is this enormous book. I wonder how it squares with your size restriction. What book? My unabridged Sashras. It's a very rare edition and a precious family heirloom, so I don't know if it would be make an ideal candidate for the journey. No, 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 are you kidding? This shit is perfect. It should be just the right size, but like big, just like Barkley, not too big. But what if it gets damaged? It'll be set on fire. Oh, silly me. What was I even worried about? <laughs> I mean, scent. Fine. 
That wasn't even a Freudian slip. Dr. Freud just tripped over an errant phallus, tumbled down a flight of stairs, and broke his neck. And then his cigar exploded comically in his face. <laughs> Jane, you're funny. Oh my god, still lollygagging at the word boner I made. <laughs> oh my god. Lalon, please. Lalon, please. You thought the word the word Jane had issues with issues with was Juana? No. No, it's irregardlessly. Come on now. The word boner. It was spectacular. But for real, I won't set your fucking joke book on fire, Jane. It doesn't even do that if it goes to the worst kinds of wrong. Couldn't we send Wise Guy instead? At least it can be easily replaced. Jane. Hmm? Jane! Hmm? Fuck Wise Guy! It'd be so lame as a guinea pig big. Or guinea big big book. Guinea pig book. She wasn't even messing it up there. It was me. God damn, who am I kidding? I don't even know how to spell pig while sober. Could be sober as a church Christ. And look at it. Guinea pig. Guinea pig. I don't know. Shit looks intrinsically fucked, typographically speaking. So fuck that word and fuck those particular pigs. No, I reject your proposal that we fuck wise guy, whatever that actually means. And for that matter, the spelling of your adorable rodents named after African nations. Jane... Are you being a tight ass again? I don't think so. We talked about this. About what? About you being a tight ass. I'm not being a tight ass. Janie, it seems to me that there is a mass percent chance of you being a huge tight ass. Are you being a huge tight ass on me, Jane? Oh, God damn it, take the book. What do I care? Yes, that's the spurpit. And now we're believing with petrol. I fail to see what offering a priceless uh, book for your wildly capricious science experiment here has to do with my resolution to be less stingy with my beliefs, but all right. <laughs> Will you relax about the book? I'm only just teasing because there's like practically a 100% chance that this won't go wonk like always. Won't work like always. So, ready? Yes, let's just get on with it. We can always have more cows. Please no. Please no, guys. Please can we not have... More cows? You've just been welcomed in chat? That's just Twitch being weird. That's just Twitch being weird. Oh, Grolal thought the word that Jane had issues with was Wanda, so that's why want to was emphasized. Gotcha, gotcha. So that was so that was a misunderstanding between the characters. Gotcha. Um, we don't want more cows. I would like to reiterate that. I would write, like to reiterate, we do not want more little cows. We don't want big cows. We don't want little cows. We don't want medium cows. We don't want blue cows. We don't want red cows. We don't want cows on your left, cows on your right. We don't want green cows. We don't want yellow cows. We don't want any cows. Little cow is sh the shit, but the bad shit. We want less cows. Thank you. I think I have made my point clear to everybody involved. All the stakeholders understand. Less cows equals more good. I purify. It worked! The book is gone! Oh, no. Ah, oh, shit. What is it? Shit, 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 shit. Did you receive the book? Shit, 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 shit. Don't tell me that my book is damaged somehow, isn't it? Fuck! <sighs> is it at least somewhat intact, or is it completely incinerated in transit? I just knew we should have used Wise Guy. I can't believe this. Don't worry, the book itself is Topes fine. Yeah, it's somewhere else. It's got to be somewhere else. Oh, then what's the problem? Fuck, I'm so stupid and drunk. Stupid and drunk. I'm so stupid. Will you tell me what happened? Gotta go, we'll talk about it in some important stuff later. Uh, oh, see spoiler and began bothering. P.S. Chain, tr thank you for believing me. Uh, see spoiler back. Oh shit, oh, one last thing, Jane. Do not run the file I sent you before I get back. I need to, uh, J -J Jane, J -J don't do it without me, okay? See spec. Fuck! I love Lalonde so much. Oh my god. <clears throat> Let's see. By the way, you're still on your mission to ban to ban all names. <laughs> oh boy, the noise. Oh gosh. Okay, time to reduct the points. You're reading that as as cats, not cows. The world was happier for uh for you that way. What but cats are wonderful, blue glass. Cats are wonderful. What about music cows? Oh my god, I want a music cow now. I want I want just an entire flash of homesick that's just cow doing like Broadway musical songs. Let's go. This is the reality that needs to happen. 
You wonder what her big deal was. It's always something with her. You notice again her game file beckoning you to play, but she warned you to not to until she gets back. Fooey. Oh, hey, you just noticed your slightly abridged edition of Sasha is there on the floor. You guess you could have sent the much less valuable copy and saved a lot of arguing. But what's done is done. There's more reading material sprinkled about, too. You've clearly got some time to kill before your BFFC gets back from her emergency. Might as well do some casual reading. But there's nothing casual about hoisting even an abridged Sasha is on your lap, so forget about it. There's always Game uh, Girl. But the articles are a bit vapid, and in your view, somewhat demeaning to female gamers and women in general? Wow, it's nice to see that that hasn't changed since this comic has come out. You and Rolal are convinced that the whole thing is just written by the same odious D-bag who writes Game Bro, which is exactly what makes it good for the L-U-Ls. Oh, good for the, the L-O-Ls. Her words. Speaking of bros and the games they play. Three pony pals. Hell fucking yes. You've read this a million times already. It's one of your favorite gifts. Another gander uh, uh, couldn't hurt. Amazing chapter titles. Potentially the TOC, the table of contents for the greatest book ever written. But Beta and Court shout out this nightmare instead. A visitor. Screaming ponies. Motherfuck. Danger. Flames. Missing. The fight. Blood in the snow. Holy shit. Homeless. Three ideas. Acorn shadow. A pony broods. 11. The final freakout. Appendix A. Official body count. Horseshoes. Horseshoes. What? Eh, whatever. Pony pals time. Let's go. Oh, exactly. Cats are wonderful. Cows are not. Got you, Blue Glass. Got you. Got you. I understand now. You actually watch Deadpool the Musical on YouTube? It's great. I didn't know. Wait. Deadpool the Musical? This sounds wonderful. What? Let's go. Flip to page one. Oh, okay. This is what we're going to be reading then, I guess. Tragic Pony Noose. Dumb name. Sounds like a product of a speech impediment by an imbecile. Anna Harley. Yo, that's rude. That's fucking rude. That's fucking rude. Anna Harley. <laughs> Why would you say that about Jade's last name? That's so rude. This guy's a dick. Bro Strider is a dick, but we knew that from the previous timeline. Do I need to actually read the details here? Hmm, probably. Almost as good a name for you. Not sure why. Almost a good name for you. I don't know. That's interesting. The whole Anna thing. Almost a good name for you. Jade Harley. Sad Harley noises. Unintentionally dunking on Grandpa. Yo, you're right, though. You're right, though. It's Dick Strider. Yeah, exactly. DS stands for Dick Strider. Add an end. Oh, yeah, Nana. I got you. I got you. That's a good joke. That's a good joke. Came out to our back door and ran across the backyard. There were two ponies in the paddock behind Anna's at house and yard. Hey, ponies. Anna called out. We're going for a trail ride. As she prepared the noose adroitly, God, Dick Strider, please. Someone mentioned last time and somebody made a fanfic of this entire book as annotated by DS. It's major spoilers right now, but really good. Yeah. Yeah. Anna's pony acorn was standing in the pony shed. The other pony, Lil Sebastian, be belonged to Anna's next door neighbor and the pony pal, the city pony. <laughs> Wait, and pony pal, Lulu Sanders, the city of Pawnee, Indiana. <laughs> Why though? What a good reference. Lil Sav came over to uh, Anna, but Acorn stayed in the shed. Uh, Anna thought that the Acorn was trying to hide from her. He liked to play Catch Me If You Can. I'm scared shitless of my master. Jesus. Jesus. And there's a full audiobook, audiobook with an animation on YouTube one day. Oh, God. It goes on. It goes on. And it went into the shed. Acorn wasn't fucking around. He was staring at a fluffy black cat with white paws, taking a dump on his favorite saddle. The cat was staring back at Acorn, shitting like tomorrow wasn't a thing. Hey, kitty, said Anna. What are you doing here? She asked, an act of defecation oddly foreign to the girl. <laughs> Pawnee came into the shed behind Anna. Whose cat is that? The rural township inquired. <laughs> Why is Pawnee here? Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. I don't know, asked Anna. It's not a pony, so who seriously gives a fuck? Suddenly, a mouse ran from behind the feed bin. The contrived incident caused some extra shit to happen. Acorn was like, oh, hell no. Not the fuck in my paddock, bitch. Acorn nickered as if to say, vile slurs omitted. 
hey, why did the Prospect family change last names, but the Durst, but the Durst kids not? I'm assuming it's because of the influence of the Condes on the timeline. But that's my current ass assumption here. All the Parks and Recs here. I actually love it. I love Parks and Recs, so this is a fantastic reference. That is my current assumption, Alga. Suddenly a mouse ran from behind the fee pin. The contrived incident caused some extra shit to happen. Acorn was like, oh, hell no. Not the fuck in my paddock, bitch. Acorn nickered as if, the oh, I already said that. I already said all that. Damn. The cat leaped up back up under the straw and curled himself into a ball. Acorn took a few steps toward the cat and crushed it into the death of his magnificent hooves. Acorn nickered triumphantly. That's so cute, muttered the fiction, fictional Midwestern burrow. Pam Crattle rode another goddamn pony up to the shed and said hi to her pony pals, and the whole crew beamed complacently about their bullshit horse club. Anna pointed at the cat. Acorn has a new kind of media appears to follow. You know, bro, Strider's a little fucked. Man, screw handwriting. This is easier. Later, about halfway through the book, rather than see the gag through the bitter end, Strider began pasting over entire pages of original text with his own completely rewritten version of the story while keeping all the chapter titles. His revision, re revision is a tough, emotionally draining read, but it's cathartic in all the worst ways possible. I know stories like that. He tends to get carried away with his projects. She exploded? I mean, like, who exploded? Like, are you referring to, uh, are you referring to, um, the cat? Because that's pretty morbid. You try to distract yourself with Strider's literature, but it's no use. Your curiosity is overwhelming. Lawn could be gone for hours, for all you know. Surely there can't be any harm in just installing the file, could there? When Lalon says, don't install the file, perhaps don't install the file. That would be nice. Oh, no. That's not good. No, 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 no. Why does that say suburb client till death, dot till death? No. Why? Lalon, can you not write in obscure programming languages manufactured by trolls that can cause explosions? Till death file monk s. Nice background. It is a nice background. It is a very nice background. That last line, I didn't read. Did I not read it? What are you talking about? Surely they can't be any harm in installing the file? I read it, though. I read the damn thing. I read all of this. Oh, I read that age. I read that ages ago. Acorn of the new kind of media appears to tolerate. And then I went back over here and started talking. Maybe I read it in my head instead of out loud, but I'm pretty sure I did. Suburb was likely written until death to begin with. The extension was just hidden. Hmm. That's an interesting take. That's a very interesting take, and it, it would actually explain a lot. There's an odd extension for the file. You don't think you've ever seen it before. Am I missing something? Oh, she exploded. Got you. Got you. I got you. Okay. That, it wasn't the whole last line. It was just the last bit of the line that I missed. Got you. You're right, though. You're right, though. Thank you for the call out. Install Suburb Client because I'm a dumb bitch. Um, <clears throat> suburb. Uh, it doesn't even seem to install anything. It just runs a small application when you execute it. Looks like you're one key press away from playing. Uh, do you dare? Why did nope Suburb version 0.0.0, .0 with the batter the batter which is symbol? Jane, this is stupid. <clears throat> Like I'm really confused. The fact that the fact that this is currently on the version that that Lalonde sent over. Like, does Lalonde like come from like a reality where like Betty Crocker took over all of existence or something? Is that why there's all this tech that Lalonde keeps having? I'm confused. And now we have this this pirated version that Suburb. Well, I guess technically is Suburb owned by Betty Corp right now, so maybe that's not it. You have some more theories on that, but it's uh, it, but it, but it gets into speculation, spoilers. So nope, gotcha. So this is a bad idea. This is a bad idea. Version zero point zero point zero. Yeah. So this is a terrible idea. Um, press enter. Psst. <laughs> hey Jane. Step away from your computer. Computer? Wow. Pewter. 
It'd be funny if any of us started playing Super right now and it goes boom. So, was this a trap? Was this a trap from Jane? <laughs> or, or to Jane? Oh, boy. Yeah, <laughs> that face! That face exploded! What? Oh, boy. Dude, Sweet catch! Thank you, God Cat. God, you wish stuff would stop exploding. Oh. Ooh. Answer the big dick strider. That face is a mood, absolutely. And Shrider was right, she did explode almost? Hmm. It's fair. <laughs> Wait, why does it already have a Durst outfit on? Why does the fucking puppet already have a Durst outfit on? That fucking puppet. That fucking puppet. What? What? Do, 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 do. Why does this happen? Uh, because Cal makes no sense. You're right, though. I should probably warn you. About what? Yet another exploding game trap? Well, shit, she already sent it. Yes, but to be fair, she warned me not to run it. That's weird. Why? She was probably just trying to protect me from the Batter Witch's latest assassination attempt. Sheesh, I can't believe you all finally got me saying Batter Witch too. Who would have thought? The cow that came with him was the one from Durst. I had the Durst outfit when June sent it on the meteor carrying, uh, carrying him. Got you. That doesn't make me feel better, though. That still doesn't make me feel better about its existence. About its existence. You know what I mean? Like... It explains a lot, but does not make me feel good <laughs> on the inside. No, it's weird because Alon was the one who rigged it to explode. It was just a bogus copy she coded herself. The real game file she downloaded is totally legit. What? Really? Got it right here myself. Checked it out. File's fucking clean as a whistle. A whistle that overcame a major substance abuse problem, trying to get its life back on track. The whistle is holding a steady job now. It's taking things one day at a time. Eat a fucking dinner off that whistle. Okay, I'll shut up now. Why would she do that? To accomplish exactly what it sounded like it accomplished, you narrowly avoid averting you narrowly averting the fake threat to your life, then getting your shit all hot and bothered at the Baroness over it. Then you abdicate your heiress throne or something and give up on this game as a big fuck you to the genocidal cake alien. But if she felt so strongly that I shouldn't play, she could have just told me, or more forcefully, or told me more forcefully, I guess. I would have listened, maybe? She's working through some problems right now. She really doesn't want us to play that game, so I guess this was the insane stunt she whipped up to derail the inevitable. Kind of reckless for my taste. One of the above statements is a fucking lie. Are you gutsy enough to come shoot a spot it? Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Why? Why can't everyone love Lil' Callie's cool? Lil' Cal Oh my god. Be gone. Be gone. Nidus Vanitas from the chatty yes. Maybe she was justified in taking such an extreme measure. I sure haven't been taking her seriously. She even warned me not to play it until she got back, but I went ahead anyway because I was too impatient. Actually, now that I think about it, she was probably going to disarm it or something when she got back, seeing as her objective had essentially been accomplished already by an actual assassination attempt. After all, I told her I would, uh, I would believe her about everything. That probably made her feel guilty about setting me up, so she told me not to touch the file until she returned. Sounds about right. But then I went ahead and ran it anyway like a doofus. I think she just wanted to be believed. Shucks, am I an awful friend? Yes. Nope. I'm not so sure about that. Well, before you go taking a massive sad crap all over your friendship credentials, consider this. Only she could manage to blow up your computer with a nasty death loop virus and somehow make you feel the one to feel shitty about it. <laughs> you're right. Or maybe you're the one or maybe you're the one who uniquely, uniquely fills the predicate in that construction. I don't goddamn know. Your friendship with her is a half drunken three legged relay race, and the baton is a stick of dynamite. And you two are the only ones on the track. Me and English are watching over from under the bleachers, high-fiving constantly. I guess that's a pretty apt metaphor, even though it doesn't make the slightest bit of sense. Yeah, that seems pretty accurate for what's going on right now. You just got the no cursing thing? How does this work with Homestuck? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. I mean, <laughs> I won't be able to curse, so I'll have to, I'll have to substitute the words with, uh, with alternatives of my own choosing or skip over them. So use it at your own discretion. You're gonna do it? Dangerous. Dangerous. Let's see. No cursing. Okay. That's a, that's what, a, a 10 minute or? That's a 10 minute one? Big F. Big F. 
Okay, it's starting now. I just I just wanted to start playing the game so badly. Now 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 more than ever I have reason to believe the stakes have increased dramatically. They have and they will continue to. I think our dream counterparts are all marked for death, and if we stand a chance, we must move quickly. I agree. Just heard about your assassination on Prospid. Oh, she told you already? URL? No. I read it in the newspaper. Um, are you being ironic again? No, I just picked up one of those sleazy Durside uh, tabloid rags. Sometimes they'll feature some pretty entertaining gossip about royalty or whatever, but they're primarily dedicated to smearing Prospid. The press had a field day with the deaths of the page and the maid. <clears throat> How will Carcat pray now? Well, I mean, maybe there should be a religious clause, you know? <clears throat> If, as long as Carcat doesn't show up for a while, yeah, we'll be fine. We'll be fine. Dursite. Oh my god, why is my throat dead? Oh my god, my voice has changed dramatically. I can't continue the comic like this. <coughs> there we go. <coughs> Who? Guys, something happened deep in my throat, in the bowels of my, like, gross throat, and I don't know if I can deal with it. Dursite, you mean the other planet? The evil one? Thank you, Spartan. Thank you. On the subject of no cursing, you once read that whole Jane uh, Rolal bit earlier as I was talking about uh, Jane being a tight bud. We could also be like a tight anus. Like, there are, there are many options there. But tight bud makes it, makes it a lot cuter. Darius, yeah, not necessarily evil. That's a bit simplistic. The kingdom represents the forces of opposition to Prospin and the four heroes. Us. What did the story say about me? Dead was the whole big hot headline. Then a photo of your dead body lying there followed by a whole bunch of bull poopy slander. It was also reported that your tower exploded. They couldn't find the body to give it a pop proper funeral. Probably incinerated. Wow, I didn't realize you had woken up in the game already. When did that happen? Don't know. Years ago. Don't really recall. I guess I shouldn't act surprised you didn't tell me. What well, with all your high flute and secrecy. Imagine using the no cursing thing just as the start of a Carcats dialogue or a Gamzee one. I feel like that would detract from the characters at some point, though. Like, in Homestuck, like, there's a little bit where it's fine, but man, if you can't curse this car cat, like, I feel like you're losing something magical. You know what I mean? It's hard to explain. I never technically, I'm never, I was never technically asleep there. I was awake without realizing it then. I realize it, and I sort of learned how to be awake there while awake here, too. I am awake now there, albeit pretending to be asleep. Pretending? Why? For one thing, it gets a bit distracting managing two alert bodies in different places at one time, and for another thing, it's better to maintain appearances. Everyone belie on Durst believes their heroes haven't woken yet, though they are both rumored to be very active sleepwalkers, which is half true. She can't ever seem to sleep still. Goes and wanders off for days. Sometimes I've got to go round, uh, go round her up from some godforsaken cranny of the abyss. Drag her tipsy ass home. Aw, oh, damn it. Restarting. Restarting. I just did it. I just did it. More, more like magical. It's, a, it's more than magical. It's a miracle. Restarting the countdown. Tuck her back in. Maybe I'll turn her leg to the bed if she doesn't wake up soon. Though in light of her recent assassinations, her slumbering attraction to the void probably works to her advantage. No one ever knows where she is. I'm still not following. Why are you maintaining the appearance of being asleep? On Prospect, it seems as if people there regarded me and Jacob very highly, like celebrated, ce celebrated figures. Is it not the same way on Durst? No, it's essentially the same situation here. They glorify us the same way, almost like uh, we're their purple pajama team mascots, even though they will completely oppose our objective when all is said and done. Kind of ridiculous, really. But even so, it's better to lay low, not to alert anyone to my alertness. Emote. Now I can sneak around and gather information, do some recon before crap starts hitting the, uh, getting real. You unredeemed, no cursing? Maybe I, maybe I should add a cancel. The, the only thing is, like, so... So, the, like, a lot of people have things like remedies or whatever, like, or counterspell or whatever they want to call it to cancel out these effects. But it kind of feels bad for the person who, um, for the, it, it, it feels bad for the person who initially redeemed it, you know? Like, it just kind of feels crappy. So, I don't know how I feel about those. Giving you 1,500 points? <laughs> just working on it real quick, huh? Let's see, let's see. In other words, read new paper, newspapers, get a feel for the word on the street and such, as might a detective. Yeah, among other things, like keep an eye on the agent activity. You mean secret agents? No, more like high-ranking officials. Judging from your knife wound, I'm betting you were the victim of the ARC agent himself. ARC agent, so it's ARC agent Jack. ARC agent 
Jack Noir. What a good name. Our boy has come down from the tier of godhood, but we set it at a reasonably high bureaucratic space. Let's see. You should feel honored, I guess. Who's that? Guy named Noir. Real nasty dude. Crazy ambitious. Loves knives. If we're going to stand any chance of winning this thing, I got this nagging suspicion we're going to have to take him down first. And a feeling that nags equally is that it ain't going to be easy. I can't wait to see what, what happens with the prototyping in this session. We had him as an arcade in his first introduction. That was forever ago. He's He's been a god for so long, you know? Why be a god when he can work in the government? <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, I guess it's good enough for government work. I guess I find all that ominous, but I cannot lie, sir. Nothing you have said has made me one iota less excited to begin this adventure. Those dastardly agents can try to assassinate me all they like. I just want to get started. That's the most awesome way to be, Jane, and sort of why you'll be our leader. Sort of. Right, still tr fixing to pull the strings for us per your extensive puppet metaphor? Pulling them as we speak. I'm having a little set install a real copy of the client on a computer in your house. A clean computer, none of the BB Corp garbage you tend to accumulate. I'll have to insist from this point onward, you employ neutral devices. That crap messes with your head. Hmm. Alrighty, I think I can make that concession. Once it's installed, I'll connect with you. I'll be your server player. I know this isn't what you were hoping for, but some improv improvisation is in order. While you get the ball rolling, I'll try to talk some sense into that mercurial booze hound. Sounds like a plan. I do hope she comes around. It would be a bummer to play without her. She will. Say, do I have any machines that survive the explosion besides this one? Do you have any machines that don't inoculate you with uh, hamburger helper ads and Guy Fieri's heinous, uh, heinous propaganda? I guess not. Still, some nice things were surely destroyed. I think Detective Pony was caught in the blast. It's unlikely Acorn survived. A fitting end to a life of moral compromise. So, since I'm apparently out of neutral devices, which computer is Seven selling the file on? On your dad's computer downstairs. The one in the study. You're on mobile and your streams are really behind. Sorry, you respond really late to things. Yeah, no, it's totally fine. That's totally fine. I appreciate you trying to engage anyway. So, like... If I get confused as to what you're referring to, I'll let you know. Be like, oh, what were you talking about? But, like, other than that, like, by all means. Hello. Hello. Another top. Here we go. Oh, my goodness. Gotcha. My poor dad. He surely heard the explosion. I put him through so much today. Oh, no. What? I just had a dreadful thought. The kitchen is just below my room. What if he had begun baking his afternoon cake when my computer exploded? No, can I get a big F in chat? Can I get a big F in chat? Oh no, it doesn't say dead, but he looks pretty dead. Not again indeed. You erase the concept of words being bad because because it's idiotic and should not exist. I agree. No cursing is less about words being bad and more about just um, having fun by shaking things up. I wouldn't worry about it. Maybe I should go look, though I'm a little afraid to. I think it'll take a lot more to kill that dude than a little falling debris. Trust me. I'm hoping that I'm hoping that he's fine. Yeah, okay, he is fine. He is fine. Okay, thank God. Thank God. Yeah, there's no dead. That's the thing. There's no dead, so we're fine. Okay, can I... Everybody, revert the Fs. Do whatever the opposite of F is. Everybody, everybody. Can I get some pogs in chat? Can I get some dad pogs in chat? Woofer pogs if you got them. There wasn't a dead for dad last time. Oh, I guess that's fair. We just saw a lot of blood. S, I guess? Hmm. Huh. I hope so. The Crockers have a, something of a legacy when it comes to losing forebearers and mysterious explosions. I would be so sad if I kept the tradition alive like this. The most you have to worry about is getting grounded back to the Stone Age. When you enter your session, it'll probably lock you up in a prison cell on Durst. Probably stick a huge safe in front of the bars for good measure. Now do me a favor and hop off the couch. Okay, what are you doing? Making room for something big. We are deploying. You watch Die Stry deploy some sort of mammoth instrument onto your balcony. It's just as well he took over for Rolal. She probably would have destroyed half the house with the thing in her condition. But on the bright side, you're sure RL would have enjoyed a good knicker with you over the notion of DS and deploying his mammoth instrument. <laughs> oh my gosh. Ah, yes, the big instrument. You know what I'm saying? Like, DS is uh, the, his namesake. 
Let's see, let's see. Oh, you're late. Welcome, welcome, Void Squid. Welcome. How are you doing today? You mean the fact that makes it cursing is that the words are bad? Eh, it's just more of a categorization. I agree with you, though. Like, I, I have argued with people. I don't think cursing is inherently bad. And honestly, that's mostly something that's, like, preached to people when they're young um, from parents that ends up being, like, completely dropped later. In, in, most, in most cases. Let's see. The way they go through uh, through Dittree to not re uh, yeah they they go through so much not to reveal the names and I don't even know like why they go through like so much so much thing it's like so many like efforts to hide the name it's like seriously why are they bad it's just because somebody decided that they were which is stupid read I will read I will read <laughs> let's see. You wonder what she could possibly be up to. While you're at it, you also wonder what the deal is with this KG treatment of their names. Die, Stry, Roll, Loud, DSRL, Stryder, Lawn. It's all starting to get a bit silly. Each of their full names has 11 characters, and you've been dancing around all but two. Maybe it's time you formally address, introduce the last two characters. Let's go! Let's go! Okay, exciting. Let's go. Because Hussey is having fun? Hussey is having fun. That's, that's literally the only reason. It's literally just the writer messing with... It, it's hidden not for the sake of the characters, but just for the sake of the readers. That's it. One of the last two stands in her bedroom. It is a young lady. Due to an incident involving a purifier and an unabridged Colonel Sasher's and a perfectly white cat, um, she will not be able to assist. Oh, no. Oh no, due to an incident involving a purifier and unabridged Colonel Sasheras and a perfectly white cat, she will not be able to assist her BFFC for some time. Did she create the Guardian? Did she? Best character in Homestuck, not even your favorite, just fact. Let's go, roll all. Cause did is this is this a genetic is is this how um, God Cat was created? Um, let me, let me write some stuff down real quick, just in case I remember for when it gets confirmed or unconfirmed later. I might be, I might be reading too much into it. Uh, white cat equals G cat. Let's go. Yo, I'm excited. I'm excited. She will not be able to assist with her BFFC for some time, and due to the aggressive occur a, a concurrence of it all that takes place in Paradox Space, this incident has not happened yet. But what has happened yet was this young lady's 13th birthday. It took place almost three years ago, and on that date her plaque name was engraved. It was engraved with 11 letters, to be precise, nine of which you are already familiar with. You couldn't, fi you figure it couldn't hurt to take a peek at the engraving. You've been dying to get the sco scoop on those last two mysterious characters. Hey, get that, get that cow out of the way. Move the tail. Roxy Lalon, let's go, let's go. Welcome back, those last two characters. It's a good pun. It's a good pun. Roxy Lalon. Oh my goodness, we finally have Mom's name. <laughs> we made it without a spoiler. So if there's no Rose to Lalon, we have it, guys. The name. The name. Those final two chromosomatic sim symbols have been released from their fluffy, twitchy prison. Thank you, Cat, who is probably Jasper's. Hello, your name is Roxy. By the way, no cursing has been dropped, so I can say this. God damn, do you love wizards? Oh my goodness. Do we. When is this back there? What is that back there? Let's see. Oh, yo, look at the game systems. Look at the video game systems. I dig it. I dig it. You wish and hope that they are real, and so too is their magics and stuff. You enjoy fan prose for said magical men, but you also think that maybe it's not so great because fan prose is... But you, however, quite great at the esoteric sciences, such as ectobiology. Why do you know all these things? Why do you know things? I'm just going to write down, why do you know things? Ooh, you shouldn't know about ectobiology yet. Why does that... Mm. Dark fin astrology and the delicate art of a purification. You tend to have accrued dead preserved specimens from your experiments, little to none which aren't feline. Let's see. IRL word band, Roxy. <laughs> oh! <laughs> all right, I started the countdown. I started the countdown. That's all good. As long as we know the name. As long as we know the name. Yeah, yeah, Reaver Cursive. I like it. I like the pun. 
Let's go. She was doing active biology in the original universe? That's true. That's true. It just seems like something very odd for, like, a 16-year-old girl to already be, like, in doubt, like, like, dealing with. No, I'm gonna see what it's like on chat's end. You're right, though. No, chat can call, chat can call her whatever chat wants now. We're good. We're good to go. I am the one. I have become the chat. Let's see. Click the link. Uh, ooh, I'm a little iffy on just like randomly clicking YouTube links during home stuff streams. Uh, do. You saved me. So Thank you, State Farm. Oh, it's Chicago. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Don't Yo, watch I love Chicago. Age. You guys are gonna have to listen to an ad if I were to watch this, but it, it is Chicago. I can't say the name of the song, but you guys all know it. You guys all know it. You're gonna call her Steven? No, don't do that. That's not what I meant. Yeah, no, no. It's just a song from Chicago. It's very, it's very well, it's very, very well done. Let's see. You aren't one to shy from a bit of gaming, particularly the well sort, the the sort well past its prime. Okay, retro gamer. Uh, you have a real soft spot for old school technology. It's fair to say that most of your leanings are governed by a bent for nostalgia. Your coding credits totes for dick, uh, basically making you the hottest shit hacks or bitch you ever knew. To the deadly grit ass, she is beautiful. You know you are known to non seldomly employ roguish demeanor towards the fellas. Roguish demeanor. Roguish demeanor. Soft confirm of thief class? Soft confirm of, of uh, thief class, maybe? A habit not especially jeopardized by your non-infrequent inebriation. Which is to say, against the better judgment of when you're age, you like to dip into the sauce now and then. Unless your mom is looking, which happens to be virtually never. And considering she has been known by the knowledgeable to be in possession of vision on the fold, as Rose really do, this strikes you as particularly stunning laughs and fair parental diligence. <laughs> Imagine being able to see all of reality and not checking in on your daughter still. But you have good friends and many attractions to fill this void in your life. What will you do? Oh my goodness. You thought it was going to be Suburban Jungle? Oh, yo. Suburban Jungle is such a good song. Let's see. Roxy's situation's a lot weirder than June's for reasons we can't really explain without spoilers. That's fine. That's fine. Then don't explain. I'm sure I will see it. Let's see. I might read Beyond Homestead Classic, though, and, and, and June's not in, uh, in the epilogues either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. June, the only reason why June... Yeah. The only reason why I'm okay with June in particular is because it was from a tweet. It might happen in Homestuck 2, from what I understand, but because it literally wasn't in any published content yet. So it's a weird case where that was one thing I was okay with, even though it, it isn't in Homestuck proper. I don't want to be spoiled by anything in the epilogues. Like, I don't even if I don't read them on stream, I'll probably read them in my own time. So. Yeah, so. Like. Please don't spoil like future things. Like I don't know why I don't know why you would feel the need to. That's all. Like it's fine. It's fine. You you know you know more now. Like you you it's all good. Let's see. Lots of stuff was discussed discussed by Hussey as possible uh, before showing up in the context itself. I wouldn't know. Like that's one of those things I don't know without context. So mentioning tweets shouldn't be spoilers unless they mention events in the comic. Gotcha. Well, let's see. Whale like an alley cat and blow bubbles in your drink. Um, yo, Rolal is not empowered to resurrect this crusty old gag template because all of a sudden, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, she is too busy being the other guy. We have absolutely got to peep the last two characters of this Max Chill dude's name on the devil fucking double. Examine placronym. Let's see, let's see. It's, it's not supposed to say that Hussey declared all ships canon in a tweet. Yeah, let's not just directly state things that are in Homestuck 2 in the epilogues. I would appreciate that. Even if the tweet was made after this point in the comic. Yeah, like, and that makes sense. Like, with, with, with what I assume is a bunch of alternate realities and timelines, I'm sure that there is some precedent for that being the case. That doesn't really surprise me. That would have been super spoilery in the beginning. Also, I can now say Roxy again. Let's go. Let's go. Let's see. 
Hey, clear out the stupid pony. What is this? Some sort of miniature paddock? Come on, show me. Dirk Strider. Now, I believe this name was actually said in chat, and until they said Dystra, I didn't remember, but that's okay. We can finally say the name Dirk. Thanks, Pony, who's presumably a tiny maple hoof for some reason. The final two diluvial symbols have been unearthed from countless crushing ounces of slumber pony. Examine room. Your name is Dirk. Holy shit, do you love puppets. That makes me... Oh, God. Ooh, TOS. <laughs> you possess the extreme dexterity to operate your false friends unseen. That is, well, when they are not preambulatory through your loving imbued mechaniz mechanization. You dig writing cognitive algorithms for set apocryphal men, and you think that maybe that's fucking dope. Guess what else is dope? Everything else you do. Your side-wicked audio didact on ancient civilizations, a self-made uh, self master of mythologue, and a pre-internatural pop culture academy. Interesting. So many robots. No, nobody said it said it in chat unless proven. Look at the TV. That's why I said TOS. Because it showed something else earlier. And I was like, TOS, yo, what's up? Don Glover. Because I saw what's in the TV. Dirk is brony confirmed. Let's go. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, there's a rainbow dash in the top right corner? Oh, you're right, though. Oh, the TOS. The TOS. Sorry, you missed the lead in the dark spoiler. It's okay, Meldy. It's okay, Meldy. You, you like can't get them all. Can't get them all. I'm worried about TOS recursive. Oh god. Oh god. <laughs> I don't like animals. Donald Glover is just a dromey. Oh shit! I didn't even catch that. I didn't even catch that. Interesting call. So let's see. If you weren't so damn aloof and actually let people get a load, you might be described as all kinds of ways. Maybe tagged as a renaissance ninja, philosopher, prince, flash step puppeteer, or perhaps as a pantheonic ironist, gangster logician, lucid waker, and dersite spy. Interesting. With the whole dersite spy thing. Oh yeah, I need to write down Dirk's name in my notes. Even though I don't think I'm going to forget the name, but it lets me... Um, put some things there so does that mean spying on Dursite or on Durs or does it mean secretly is Durs and is spying on our heroes you hear oh, wait, the human animals only fan streams dear god dear god Let's see. Screw descriptors, though, as if the shits you ain't, you give ain't nil. You're cool with dabbling with the fine sequential arts, and your work can be viewed as some borderline pornographic. And to those Philistines, you, you'll be hear, heard wondering, what the fuck do you mean borderline? Yo, I like Dirk. I like Dirk. I like that. Embracing it. I guess the better judgment of one your age, you build robots, set them to kill mode, and spar with them to the death. That is, when you're not syndicating them to friends and dueling them with rap lyrics. But you try not to co you try to cool it on the deathmatch stuff when your bro is looking, which is virtually never. And considering he's had a reputation staked on some order of martial nobility, this strike to is a staggering oversight in your brotherly vigilance. You don't have the heart to hold it against him, though. What will you do? Jut your ass and twitch like a proboscis. Let's see. Oh, choose your character. Let's see. So this explains why uh, why Bro Strider in the other timeline was like super into uh, fighting all the time with uh, with Dave. There's no way in hell you're gonna give this gag the time of day, even if you weren't suddenly totally ambassadored by the character select screen uh, from way out of left field inside your glasses. Once again, you are grabbing the plush by the rump. You are in absolute command of your destiny. As long as you don't pick the two characters you're great at, which is universally understood UI convention for non clickability. Also, as long as both the other available choices are finished being drawn, we are passing out free will like cheap cigars. Let's see. He's basically the human version of Equius, but a lot less creepy and a lot less strong. Huh. Way more cool. His cool meter is off the charts. Oh, I was going to try to click them. I was, trying to I was going to try to click them. I wonder, does Homestuck hide cool things in its sources? Oh, I don't like that Homestuck 2 is there. Wait, wait. Oh, should I even be reading this? Okay, no. Let's see. Probably not anything I need to go digging through right now, but... Hmm. Okay, not something I want to Not something I want to mess with. Press Control-Alt-T, technically as a flash. Sure, why not? Nothing. Nothing. Not cooler than Dave, though. Nobody in Homestuck can be cooler than Dave. You right, though. You right, though. 
So, let's see. Do we want to go chat? Okay. You guys decide this. Do we want to go with Roxy or Dirk? Let's decide. I will let you guys decide. Uh, actually, I'll set a one-minute poll. I will, I'll just do a poll. That's the easiest way to do it. Decide who to go first. Start poll. There we go. We love them both, but Roxy is amazing. I do enjoy Roxy a lot. I do enjoy Roxy a lot. We'll have to do both of them anyway. This is just for first. Um, I don't know. I doubt I'll be able to get to the end of this act today, uh, just based on the way everybody was talking before stream. So probably should start thinking. I mean, I don't know how far we'll be in like an hour or two, but I am under the impression that this is not a one stream act. 30 seconds left in the poll. Choose, choose, choose. Also, hey guys. Hey, hey, hey. How you doing? Hey, hey, hey. Bingo bongo. We'll just have to see. Yeah. Who's cooler, Strider or Strider? Her. Her. Okay, the poll is closing soon. It's closing absolutely soon. You think we can make it? If it's not close, I don't know, because we get distracted a lot. Whoa, overwhelmingly Roxy. Overwhelmingly Roxy, let's go. You are now Roxy. What were you up to again? You were floating somewhere in the nonlinear times to a paradox space, and we were hoping to get a handle on the exact chronology of your situation. Perhaps your successive actions will oblige us? Yeah, you aren't really listening. You're going to do whatever the hell you want. Grab that sweet gun. Gun, rifle kind, and fist kind. Let's go. You pull out your high-octane laser gun. It's powered by the most deadly sciences you know of. You keep a couple of specific allocations in your portfolio on standby. You try to stay as sharp as possible in unarmed combat because you never know when you'll get ambushed. It's dangerous out there. Examine dead mutant collection. Hello, little mutant jaspers. The biggest one has been around for as long as you can remember, encased in the glass-like material. You've considered giving it a name, but it always struck you as a little morbid to name a dead cat. The others were a result of a few experimental mishaps before you got the hang of ectobiology equipment. You kept them around to remind you of the peril of inexact science, and also because they're weird-looking and kind of cute. But since you've cloned many healthy felines, they all live in a laboratory out back. Your pet cat doesn't really get to live get along with the other cats, and you don't want to upset him. You just love Roxy? Yeah, yo, Roxy's fun. Roxy's absolutely fun. Fist kind, because how Mom will uh, fought a monster with her own hands during Jack Ascend. Ah! Gotcha, gotcha. You know, it is really impressive that the, um, that the, uh, I wanted to call them ancestors, but we'll just call them parents, because ancestor, that keeps the troll human distinction fine. But the parents were able to kick the shit out of, um, the monsters in, um, in, what was it, B1, I believe is, is the terminology? Yeah, because A is trolls, B is, B is kids, unless you're talking alpha beta, then it flips, and then it's nonsense. Let's see. In fact, everyone does not have this kind. In fact, only one character had it before that, too. You think Gamzee had it? Ah, gotcha. Gotcha. Now you're good, Ninois. You're good. Common mistake. I mean, I, I was trying to rack my brain. I think that everybody... I think that most... Uh, before we got later into Act 5, people were kind of restricted on their strike specificities anyway. Let's see. Modus time? Let's go. Yeah, let's go. You took the biggest one into your message in a bottle. Modus, this is terrible. Uh, these little guys are quite handy for busting through windows whenever you're ready to christen a new fenestrated plane. Oh my god. What in the world? This Modus is terrible. Literally a liquor cabinet. A wine cabinet. Oh my god. What? They are really doing this. The alcohol is strong in this one. You write though. Take books. You take the first six books of your mom's best-selling series, Complacency of the Learned. She made an impossible fortune off of these books, considering how dark and inaccessibly written they are for young readers. More money than the U.S. financial system could even account for as a legitimately circulating in the economy. Many suspected real-life witchcrafts were involved, which is somewhat, so, which is what some believe discouraged criminal investigation into the matter. The feds were afraid, and the Baroness nervous. God, you hope that's all true. Let's see, examine the coddle poster. Complacency of the learned. Oh, who? Who? Creepy face. Creepy face. The color palette disturbs me. Some original edition cover arts were from the... I think it's, it reminds me of when Gamzee, like had that picture 
um, with like the blood on his face and everything, the kind of like gray stone, uh, stone um, skin. The modus are still something. Yeah, yeah, it's insane. That was Rose's entry item, if I remember. I do remember, actually. I do remember, which is really interesting. Let's see. You forgot about this? We're not finishing this act? <laughs> Looks like an emo hussy? Kind of, a little bit. It features the androgynous young apprentice cow mouses. I'm going to write down cow mouses just because who even knows at this point what will come back to bite me in the ass? Uh, complacency of the learned. Who even knows? Who throughout the series plays the roles of anti-hero and chief antagonist? She he convinces the uh, fellow disciples to rebel against Zazzar Pan's vaunting complacency, and one by one hunts down each wizard. All twelve are killed, but the precedent scholar himself forcing showdown. The poster depicts a notorious chess match between Cal Mouses and Zazzar Pan. Zazzar Pan has a reputation for being unbeatable. He's never lost a match even to the gods, but his apprentice was able to beat him in a wizard's duel by first becoming checkmated, and then through some unprecedented enchantment, continuing to play beyond the death of the king. You love your mom's books and find them heavily inspiring, but at times you can't help but feel that the work is exhaustingly heavy-handed at times. You kind of prefer a more lighthearted, uh, to write more lighthearted things. Actually crack a joke now and then, you know? Oh, that's actually a very good uh, drawback. In order, uh, cow mouses? I don't think so. Yeah, yeah, cow mouses. Yeah, I don't like that at all. I just, ooh, ooh. Let's see, just... Just remember, I might not remember the actual order that things happen in. Oh, to chat. Oh, Calmasis. Oh, you're right, though. You're right, though. I even wrote it down right. I am adding another L. Calmasis. Ooh, I don't like that at all. I don't like that at all, guys. Yeah, I was adding another L. I, there's another word that I did that in the stream with for something else. Not like this stream, but previous in the comic where I kept, just kept adding an extra letter. Your cat freakishly... That's some definite foreshadowing later. Like, beyond the death of king. Um, could be foreshadowing... Or not even foreshadowing, but side-shadowing the new management in Durs. Could be referring to after, like, the like the way that uh, they decided to play the game and went through another universe. Who knows? There's a lot of things that could be there. I kept calling the crux true to the crux tender. That's because it makes chicken tenders. You're right, though. But that was it. You're right. Thank you. Your cat, your cat, Friglish. Friglish is equal to cat. Friglish. What a name. What a name. Friglish. He hops down off the bed to greet you and immediately situates himself on something important, one of your creative writing journals. You named him after your favorite cat, uh, wizard from Coddle. He was just as an endearing, bumbling fellow before he was murdered. Uh, Kalmasis put an insidious curse on him, which caused him to go insane over several years. Okay! That's very much a reference to Gamzee, then. Okay! Huh. Can't technically is capable of making chicken tenders? You're right, though. You're right, though. Ho! Oh, talking more about the idea that Cal influenced Gamzee over here with the writing. He began filling a book with all of his arcane knowledge, which was said to be limitless. The tome had grown to mon monumental proportions and became virtually unreadable patchwork and an impenetrable extradition. When the young wizard finally uh, caught up with him, he was a quaking, incoherent madman. They put him out of his misery by crushing him to death with his own massive text. You think that's a fitting name for it for some reason. The macabre demise notwithstanding, of course. This is just re uh, referencing Gussie himself. Huh. Thank you for the bit. Thank you for the biddies, hetero. What Cal? No, man, Cal's go cool. You're right though. You're right though. What was I mistake? What was I thinking? Stan can't stay mad at Cal. A part of me, a part of me wants to hold on to the theory that Cal is Lord English, even though we literally saw Lord English pop out of Dark Scratch. But it was very puppety, and Dark Scratch was made from Cal, so I still hold on to this. When insane, filled a book with arcane knowledge, grew to monumental proportions, incoherent madman. That's hussy. Her, her. Cow is, cow is the best. He's the shit. You're right, though. You politely scoot Friglish off the books. That a boy. Technically, only one of the books is yours, the writing journal. You're pretty secretive about your writing. Sometimes you, even you can hardly bear to read it. You are highly aware of the formidable write, uh, writerly shadow cast over you and can be critical to the point of embarrassment over your work. Just how drunk were you when you wrote this, you often wonder yourself, and you don't think you'll be peeking at it soon. Maybe later. 
The other book is another point of embarrassment for completely different reasons. Oh, really now? Read the other book. Oh, boy. This is Jake's private journal. One day when you were feeling especially frisky, you swiped it, your swiped it with your purifier, not expecting it to actually work. But then you debated with yourself for weeks over whether to read it. And when you finally took a peek, you were strangely relieved to find all of this nonsense instead of its private thoughts, but you still didn't have it in you to cop to the theft. You disagreed, and what a shame it was about his missing book. What are these letters? You have no idea what these letters even mean. What kind of code? Bark? Crab? Abracadabra? Oh my goodness, this is uh, Abracadabra, actually. Oh my goodness, code in Jake's book. I'm just going to write that down for later. I am very worried about what this is going to mean for the future, for the possible thing. Uh, oh, is it possible that this was how... Oh wait, if, 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 if she was getting the code that she needed for to create the guardian it would have just grabbed it via slime i wouldn't have purified the book itself or maybe i'm misremembering the mechanics of ectobiology there bark now make sure to read the book's contents and write down verbatim this is extremely important you're right though you're right though meow made beck and now we have a cat and bark yeah yeah, yeah, I'm remembering this. I just don't remember if you, if you, if if it, if you're when you purify the code for the ectobiology biological stuff, it only grabs the slime if it's a paradox for them to purify it. Yeah, that's what I, that's what I thought. I just couldn't remember if for the code if they needed to purify the actual thing or just the slime. But eh, whatever. It's definitely related to the purification. Yo, yo, Roxy, yo, look at that smirk. The physical book needs to be scanned into the machine. Got it. Got it. Okay, thank you. That was the piece I was missing. That's what you uh, thats what you usually write into your journal, too. I hope that journal does not go missing all of a sudden. This is a super cute, cute panel. Look at the fur. Aw. The code's in your, entered manually. Diamond Drew did it manually to make Beck. Yeah, I just couldn't remember that. So thank you for reminding me. It isn't a ray gun, it's your purifier. Pretty much the only crocker tech you can bring yourself to use. It's just too handy not to. You just plug in the coordinates you want to nab something from, point it where you want to purify, and shoot. That's convenient. That's very convenient. It'll make the thing to purify right then and there, assuming no temporal conflicts. Piece of cake. Not crocker brand cake, though, because fuck that witch. You're thirsty. This isn't a command. Excuse me, but you beg to differ? You poured that beautiful martini a little while ago, and you've been letting it gather cobwebs while you horse around with random shit in your room. What a crime. Sip the martini thoughtfully. Delicious! Damn it! This is the wrong stock reaction. You will not stand for this outrageous misrepresentation of your beverage enjoyment. <laughs> Hussy over here having fun. You're thirsty is a hell of a command. Isn't that basically what hydrate is? Isn't that you guys telling me? You're thirsty. Drink. By the way, why is the White King in exile named after the fact that he owned uh, named after the fact that he owned complacency of the learned? I'm not sure what you're saying, Algot. Um, I'm, I'm not really understanding what you're asking. Yeah, like Rick Keeper, did he, did he have complacency of the learned? I don't remember that. That's probably a detail that I do not remember if if he did have that. There's a lot of things that, that like, kind of just, like, chill out and, like, come up later. And reading this, instead of reading all of it back-to-back -back in, like, one go over the course of a couple of days... Okay, so he did have that. Interesting. Um, instead of reading it all in a couple of days, like, reading it once per week, like, I am going to miss things for sure. Yeah, okay. Um... I mean... I don't know how much pre-scratch versus post-scratch is going to matter. I mean, obviously it matters a lot, but I'm pretty sure that the pre the 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 pre-scratch, or I should say, the A1 trolls come from this reality. Um, so we're going to see how that matters. Imagine reading one page a week; that'd be torture. The king sat in Lotus with complacency learning for like 500 years. Gotcha. You'd miss it if you read it back to back. I mean, that's fair. That's very fair. 
It's a pretty small detail because the White King literally disappears after giving up the staff and instantly gets murdered by Beck in one frame of the cascade. That's very fair. That's very fair. Um, let's see. That's much better. As much as you enjoy an afternoon cocktail, you have to remember to pace yourself with these things. They're crazy strong and tend to make you kind of sleepy. Oh my, how inviting does that sloth plush, plush pile look about now? Quite, you think. Examine the plush pile. You like to ensconce yourself in this friendly heap while you play games. Gosh, it looks soft. Your eyelids are getting heavy. Some come to the unfathomable booze snooze. Oh, there you go, wobbling. Look out below. Blackout. Nap time. Woodoop. Everybody, the time has come. The time has come for a glorious S. Okay, I will look at chat after after watching this in its entirety. Uh, let me improve the sound. Hello, Durs. Yo, I like that effect where it's just hanging over. Roxy sleepwalk. Ooh. Ooh, this slaps. Yo, what's up, Dirk? Uh, why are you bloody? Orange, orange eyes, interesting. And there's a blue circle. Well, hello there. What? This is back on real Earth. Whoa! Wait, what? Oh, this is on the ship, right? Wait, no, wait, why is Equius? What? What? Okay, there's fiery tornadoes, right? Okay, hi, hi, God Rose. Yo, yo, that's your daughter, slash mother. Let's go. We're back in Troll Land on Alternia. Kind of. So there's the teacups. Aww. Wait. Wait. So we dead nap. But was that Carcat that I saw in God Robes? Did I see Carcat in God Robes? What the fuck is this, like, spoilery shit? Was that God Tier Car Cat? And then pink eyes. Oh, they met each other. They met each other while sleeping. Interesting. There was a lot, there was a lot of stuff there. Dead, yeah, dead God Tier Car Cat. Like, at first I was like, Carcat's dead. I was like, wait, the, he's wearing pajamas, like, god robes. Oh my god. Splash is so fucking good. Okay, so you think it's the first time this motif shows up in the comic? Oh, okay. You think watching the flashes in this order is way more coherent than the other way? Oh, yeah, if we have a dirt flash, that makes sense. Yeah, dream bubble hype. Let's go. Oh my goodness. Let's see. Can I's house was right next to Rose's back there? Yeah, yeah, it was. Huh. Carcat with the talking out loud badge would literally be the worst. <laughs> Yo, that's fair though. <laughs> Let's see. These are the dream bubbles, so those are the Doom versions of them. Gotcha. Hmm. But like. What, what doomed versions of them? Like, what doomed version of Carcat God tiered? Did they meant did, did Carcat God tier within a in a doomed timeline? Cause ugh, I don't even know. I don't even know if they mentioned that. Um, huh? That was interesting. There was a lot of stuff there. I'm gonna rewatch it real quick. 
because it wasn't very long and it was apparently he did yeah that's super weird to me that's super weird to me there's a one doom timeline for a riding bard in the, ar in the army that's fair it's very fair That's wild, though. That's wild, though, that Karkad uh, got tiered in a Doom timeline. Sorry, writing down more notes. Dream Bubble hype, though. Doom timelines make infinite possibilities? Yeah, they do. Technically, like... This like this this car cat and Nep could be like actually together. You know what I mean? All ships are cannons. Roxy's eye color is super cool, I agree. This nonsense though is what is intriguing to me. And then there's this So I guess Equius in in What is going on here, though, in this green bubble? There's a lot of little stuff here. I like the, the mix of Nepeta and Karkat's uh, lands there. Yo, God Karkat looks cool. I want, I want, I want Alpha, or I guess Alpha timeline, uh, Karkat to God tier, please. It's possible. We've seen it happen with the slabs. Yo, that eye color, that eye color is baller. The emotional crisis when the B1 kids and the B2 kids meet, considering that the B1 kids lost so many of these people. In their timelines. The slabs are in Prospect and Durst, though? Uh, sure. Sure, but there's also the possibility that, like, that they can, they, maybe they can God tier in another session? I don't know. I don't know the rules for... Them going between sessions is very, is very, is very weird. I don't know if technically they can do that. Let's see. Considering that the Dirk Dave met was bro? Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Was it was there a mistake during the splash where Karkat and Nep's eyes were filled in so they had to be fixed or something, or are you thinking of something else? Oh, that would be very confusing. After homesick, you're gonna go play some 4D chess to take a break from thinking so much. Absolutely. I like that it was Dream Nep with Karkat. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was thinking. Like maybe that 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 reality is like one where they are actually like f like flushing very red. You know, like some version of Nep and Karkat exists. Like if the Dream Bubbles exist with all the Doom timelines, the the tweet about all ships being canon could very well make sense. And there could be other aspects of that. What the heck was that all about? Oh, hey there, Friglish. He creeps through the sly conspiratorial purrs. Almost. Almost as if he was privy to what you just dreamt, which is impossible, of course. Sure, totally impossible. Sure. Looks like some dude has been badgering you while they were asleep. Let's see. Maybe they were still alive in that time of their timeline and then they died later. That's that that but that's easier to understand. Gotcha. Gotcha. The dream bubbles have very interesting mechanics. Oh, this is a long one. Roxy awake yet? Guess not. Let me know. Whoa, <laughs> damn. Hey, Dirk, I had a crazy dream. There you are, but I see your dream self hasn't returned. You must be trying tying to uh, tie and wind the fuck uh, on tight already. Maybe I am, like a bow of ribbon on a beautiful pony. Man, I can be this much drunk in the last time we talked. What the hell are you even drinking? Okay, but to be fair, beautiful <clears throat> was an intentional typo for your benefit, because I know you love that, that pose. It's a beaut. So you're spying on me in Durstville again? Yeah. Fucking perv. Like what do you see there? No fucking. <laughs> Yo, Roxy's so flirty though. 
I see precisely jack shit and psych a fu fi side of fuck all. That's the point. You got too sauce and went rogue again. You're out there in your weird drifting stupor, independent of your waking self's awareness. You're gonna go after me again. Get on your horns. Gallop me home like the Prince Charming back to Swoon King Kong. King Dong. Oh, King Dong. Oh my god. Blush, 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 blush. No, I'm thinking it over. It's sort of a relief. Simplifies things somewhat. It's better you stay out there for a while. There's been a problem. What'd you do now? Okay, I fucked up. I kind of made a mess here. Not sure what to do about it yet. Hence all the blood. No need for you to worry about it for now. I'll figure something out. Until then, I'm just going to go prepare for our session while I, you know, think it over. Jack shit and a side of fuck all. How to flirt with Roxy. <laughs> I mean, like, yeah. Roxy is, like, super flirty with the king dog. <laughs> Let's go. And then Nep and uh, Jasper, right, he basically said that she might have to die to be with KK. Oh, yeah, that's good foreshadowing. You're right, though. You're right, though, uh, Sailor Lunacy. That is a nice bit of, um, I don't know if that's foreshadowing, side-shadowing, back-shadowing. He even knows. You ever accidentally get covered in blood? All the time. We did see two Aradia bots with Equius. We did. Um, what a surprise. Another mystery for you to keep to yourself and overly ce uh, cerebralize. Snore. Hey, let's talk about something cool instead, like the dream I had. Okay. First, I had some ordinary boring dreams that I don't remember, but then I remember I woke up from the dream and things got really bright and surreal, and then I saw someone. I think it was supposed to be my daughter. Why do you think that? You know those dreams where you just know someone's supposed to be someone? No? Okay, well, regular people have this, I'm pretty sure, all the time. Are you thinking it was prophetic, like a glimpse of the future? I don't know, because that's not really how the abyss works. It's not like Skya, we are, and we aren't prospect dreamers. There's nothing like that out in the abyss. If you drift far enough, there's only horror. Terrible, terrible horror. <clears throat> okay, but I'm not saying it was a future dream. It was just a glimple, and I feel like, um, or a glimple, and I, it felt real. And all I'm saying is that it was a cool dream, and I wish it was real. Glimpse. Okay, well, maybe it was. Maybe there's no fanciful game supplied mechanism of prognostication involved here. Maybe you're just an ordinary run-of-the-mill psychic. I guess that's possible. Hey, Dick. Uh, Dirk. What do you think it would be like if we had kids? What would it be like? Inconvenient, mostly. Oh, jeez. That's the Bro Strider show, an inconvenient. Is that how Bro saw Dave? I wonder. Homestuck's just one big shadow. You're right, though. You're right, though. Equius has a harem? Please never say those words again, Void Squid. The idea of Equius having a harem makes me sick. Two whole Aradia bots who aren't repulsed by him. God damn it. How to flirt, exactly. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but I don't think they can die as a robot because that's not their natural body, so they're probably alive. Interesting take. Hmm. You know what I mean? Like, what would they be like? The kids. You ever think about it? Can't really say I have. Would probably be a little shit. I'd have to train all the time. We know for an eccentric guy, you can be boring as fuck sometimes. Sorry, Rox. For what it's worth, I'm picturing them now. A boy and a girl. Two perfect little freaks of nature raised by people who've clearly got no business bringing up anybody. Yeah, pretty accurate. Shucks, Buster. It's just a little fun hypothetical to dream about. Why do you need to suck the fun out of shit? It's like some turd-hungry Dracula. It's not like I'm lobbying for you to hook up with me a whole mess of fucking babies, or that I'm possibly holding on to any such delusion that it's even a remote possibility. <sighs> Let's sign... Lassine? Yes, Lassine. You heard me. Did you mean Lassai? Hmm, nope, I'm sticking with Lassine. Going down with the shit. Ship. The SS Lassine, starring, starring Captain Rolal. What does Lassine actually mean in this context? Oh, come on. Come on, what? Lassine is a universally understood to mean he's too bad he's gay, you deliberately obtuse dunderfuck. I mean, yeah, that's what I thought. It would just be cool if you'd refrain from tossing around such antediluvian terms. Antediluvian, what? You mean saying you're gay, you mean? Yeah? Or yes. Okay, but the terminology aside, I don't think I'm off base. I don't see how it has to be a thing. I really think it's an actual thing, bro. Once upon a time, sure, but the world's changed a lot. Ever peek in a history book between your wizardly indulgences? That is a nuanced topic. Man, I know about the histories. Just believe me, it's a thing. How is it a thing? It's a thing because if it wasn't a thing, then you wouldn't be all like... All like what? Well, wanting nothing to do with the with me for starties. Don't be ridiculous. I have more than to do with you than any dude could possibly bargain for, which I like just fine. What a totally lame plus sweet answer simultaneously. Yeah, now maybe we should direct our focus on a matter which has nothing at all to do with what does or doesn't qualify as a thing and what our fantasy alt-universe offspring could be like or anything like that. Such as this game and whether you're in the best condition to be piloting Jane's connection. Maybe you could use another nap. 
<clears throat> my condition conditions are just fine. Anyway, what ain't gonna get slept off is the fact that I still don't think we should be touching that BS witch game with a third twenty foot th uh, trident. We better. We both know what her plans need us to. Uh, we both know her plans need us to. Let's see. Turd hungry Jack. Uh, oh, Jackula Dracula. Not Jackula. I don't even know what to want to think. What a Jackula entails. <clears throat> Also, interesting that uh, that that they're talking about antediluvian terms for uh, for calling uh, Dirk gay. Interesting, interesting. Um, I know that, but I thought we settled this. It's just so still so frustrating telling Jane about the dangers, even if she's just being polite. I know she just thinks I'm full of crap about everything. We settled this too. She'll believe everything eventually. Why bother working so hard to convince her? Well, I don't even do <clears throat> do that for the most part, but it gets tiring and saddening knowing that even though we're not actively talking about it, that my best friend can't bring herself to believe some really basic things about my life, like the shitty things the Baroness has done to us, or about our upbringing. Like, do you know how miserable it is for your BFF to doubt you when you tell her your mom is dead? I guess it just registers for me as a reaction which isn't completely unreasonable from her perspective. She's in inundated with media coverage of those whom we've claimed as our par uh, parental figures. Uh, that they are not presently alive, nor ever played that role for us, as she understands it, is just an extension of a much more elaborate and far-reaching explanation, which is much harder for her to digest in its entirety. I mean, anyone who isn't Jake, I mean. Still, say you should, still say you should cut her some slack. I know, and I need to remind you that the potential this game provides for their resurrection is what motivated you to in investigate in the first place. So, Roxy and Dirk are in a future, or in the future? Is what I'm taking from this? You don't even know what antediluvian means. It means before the flood. Um, it, it it's it, it's a, let me confirm that, but it, it means before the flood, and it was mainly used with um like yeah yeah with Bible terminology, and it can be used as ridiculously old fashioned as like a a thing. Yeah, so I'm taking this to be that Dirk and Roxy are in fact in the future in a reality where Crocker Core has caused an apocalypse or at least has become a totalitarian dictatorship. So let's go dystopia. Let's go. As always, though, rhet rhetorical Bible stuck. That is a curse statement. But I'm pretty sure that we're in a future dystopia. And which is hilarious because that's what I thought Jade. I thought Jade was in the future when we started Act One, but it's nice to have this actually happen. No, I remember. I told you a million times. Shit sounds like it could be the best thing ever. Whereas Ever's capped as heck. But that also, that no matter how awesome it might be, it's probably gonna advance all the schemes of her condescension. Right. But what if we can stop her? Part of me doesn't want to give her the satisfaction of starting it all up. Like, what if we like if we didn't? Wouldn't that wreck her shit just so hilariously? Like so many lulls. I must be of hard counting, because I'm barely racking up a single goddamn O oh, laugh o oh, loud at the, at the self-defeating gesture. No, but it would, and for all we know, starting it up is playing right into her claws. It could be a trap waiting for Jane the moment she enters. If I could stop her from playing, maybe I could at least give her a chance at the future. But there is no future on Earth for them, or for us for that matter. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. Imagine real-life Betty Crocker reading Homestuck. Apparently they did, from what I understand. Wasn't Bible stuck in Act 2, Act 5, Act 2? Her, her. Yo, future dystopia hype? Always. I'm always hyped for future dystopias. Let's go. I don't know that for a fact, but anyways, I kind of already made this bogus file for her. What? Why? To scare the shit out of her. To make her learn to fear her and respect the fucking hag like she should. And maybe we can drop this whole in-game meetup slash resurrection idea all together. Sweet though it may be. Rox, I hope you're not thinking of sending her one of your batshit till death scripts. On that subject, I am Miss Zwipperpips. Miss Zwipperpips, the amount of sense you have of making is unfucking real. Just go take a nap and don't even think about sending her that file. Are you listening? Hmm. I will take what you say under serious advisement. Wonk? Jesus. Dirk, when did you stop being any fun? What? It's, you used to get a kick out of a stunt like this. Man, you know I'm all down with the name stunts. Insane stunts are, uh, are practically all I'm about. As long as they actually agree with the purpose they're intended to serve. Destroying Jane's computer and dissuading her from playing is not such a purpose. 
Bet you your responder would agree with me. Why can't you be more like him? I am more like him. I mean more like him. You just misspelled more, causing me to severely understand Jack shit. Jack everything. He's more in touch with his feelings, which makes me laugh my F, my F off. Uh, fucking ass off, since he's basically a Bobot. A Rob Bob. A Bob Bob. And he can actually loosen up sometimes. Kind of like how you used to could. I used to could. For one thing, he doesn't instantly shoot down a bit of frisky RP shenanigans every now and then. Oh boy, frisky RP shenanigans. I wonder how much that's making Dirk uncomfortable. You think that's now every one of the alpha kids who has told another one that they need to be more like somebody else? Yeah, ooh, that's an interesting, that's an interesting take. That sounds kind of like it, yeah. I like wonk wonking at the plot. Yeah, I kind of wish you wouldn't do that with him. Why the fuck not? It just seems a little tawdry and disrespectful and vaguely exploitative of all the still emerging cognitive entity whose perceptual frame of reference is difficult for us to comprehend. Oh, come on! He's a cool guy just like you. He lives in... Like you, it's just he lives in some shades. It rubs me the wrong way is all. Oh, do you want me to rub you the wrong... The right way? Not really. Ugh. Ugh. You're overblowing this. It's just an ironic, funny thing we do sometimes. Come on, I'm sure you read the transcripts yourself. It's all a load of jokestery bullshit. He blocks me from being able to read the transcripts sometimes. Oh, wow, he does that? Sneaky bastard. Anyway, I'm not really sure how ironic it is. Okay, next time I will run it by the master first with his fancy fucking ironometer. Oh, here's the thing with, with the AR, since you don't seem to get it. He's very similar to me in thought process and behavior, yeah. But these, those patterns were imported from a 13-year-old version of my psyche and then sealed into a program as starting parameters. In the years since, we both evolved somewhat. I, as humans tend to be, and he in whatever way is natural for a frequently running self-aware application. So there, if there are differences between us, they're first reflected by how I fe feel it's a maturity gap, and then further by several years of minor behavioral divergences. Let's see. You love how Dirk is one of the few characters in Homestuck with proper grammar and capitalization. Yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of off-putting in a weird way. Like to like after a, so long of dealing with people's quirks to have something that's like damn near like immaculate. Can I has proper grammar and capitalization? She just has to emphasize a lot of things, but she doesn't have punctuation. Or at least normal punctuation. You keep your positioning that beta kids are just better friends? Kinda. Kinda. I, I still kind of get that. Um, but the alpha kids are also a lot more open. Yeah, no, I agree with both of those statements, actually. Like, the alpha kids talk about their feelings more, but the... Ba oh, God, I'm not going to use that. The B1... The B2 kids talk about their feelings more, but the B1 kids seem to have, like, better ties and friendship, if that makes sense. They don't need to do it as much, if that makes sense. Um... But the V2 or V2 kids are older teenagers dealing with a lot of complicated feelings. That's true. And I hope we also see that with the B1 kids whenever they arrive in this session, like three years from when they traveled. So yeah, and I'm excited to see like more complex things get handled by the Earth kids, honestly. Oh my god. He's 13-year-old Dirk. Why did that not even occur to me? This is so cute. It makes me feel kind of skeevy for saying anything levacious to him. Damn it, you ruin everything. You're welcome. Yo, you guys realize I can hear you, right? <laughs> yes, I was aware. Check out all these complicated fucking problems people have when they uh, have to live in big, lumbering flesh monsters instead of a sweet pair of shades. Dude, do you think you could sit this one out for a little while? This conversation practically doesn't even concern you at this point. Also interesting, interesting uh, that that his grammar improved over three years. You know what I mean? It's very interesting um, because thirteen-year-old Ar da uh, Ar Dirk had something that was more closely approximating Dave. You love how my Dirk voice is slightly less breathy, Dave. I try, like, they, they feel like they should be similar, but I, when, when they inevitably end up talking to each other, I need a good way of distinguishing between them. Air, stop being red. You're not Dave. You can't use it. Well, you can't use, you can't use orange. He's not Dirk either. Yo, thank you so much for the follow, Kodak, uh, Kodak Bearski. I'm glad you're enjoying, and thanks for the hydrate. Let's see. Check out, um, dude, do you think you can sit this one out for a while? This conversation practically doesn't even concern you at this point. 
It seems that there is a gnarly crooked number that represents the percentage of probability you just said this doesn't concern me. Even though it's patently obvious that half the conversation, like, way totally concerns me. Shit, Roxy. Look, he's doing the thing where he ironically pretends to fail the Turing test to sass me into submission, even though I was the one who fucking programmed him to do that. L M A F A O. Like my butt is just there on the floor. It's how hard I l I l'd it off just now. No peeking at the floor, but because I'm only 13 years old, motherfuckers. This is fucking dumb. I'm gonna leave both of you to interact however you want. I have important shit to deal with and actual responsibilities to take seriously. Roxy, go nap off your drink on aggressive or aggressively wage another flirt, larping campaign, whatever. I don't care. Just don't send that file to Jane, okay? And then Roxy proceeded to send the file to Jane. You absolutely love AR. His whole ironic robot chick is so good. It is good. It is good. AR is right as closer to Radius and Dage. I'd have to see them side by side. I'd have to see them side by side. Yo, yeah, let's get those color codes in. Ooh. Ooh. Has, uh, it has Cal uh, Calmasis, I believe it was. Yeah, Calmasis as the background. Sick, yo, Nick. Ooh, Nick's Goddess of Darkness. Ooh, ooh, her browser is Nick's. I dig it, I dig it. H3, Wizard, Suburb shit, I like it. Oh my god, more pester login. Let you bl really blow your mind? All space players, space players talking green? Really? Really? Pretty sure the day sprite has Dirk's color too? Yeah, I think that's correct, actually. That looks, uh, that looks familiar. Nyx, yes. I've been playing a lot of Hades recently, so, like, seeing Nyx here is, what the hell? Go away. Seeing Nyx here makes me super hyped. So, it looks like it's just the two of us. Oh, I went really fem. I went really extra fem. I don't know why I did that. That's not even what, like, Roxy's voice has been. Looks that way. Fancy they, that. Guess I can go back to talking in orange. Why, yes, you should def slip into something more comfortable. While I pour you some robo wine, we have much to discuss. Tense fingers together with sultry cunning. Actually, I think I like the red better. Okay, I can check the cellar. Might I have some choice years left of the Pinot, uh, the Pinot uh, Noir? I don't really doubt the Pinpot Noir. <laughs> that makes me laugh. Let's see. I don't doubt the choiceness of those pin, uh, pin pods, but I'm not going to really screw around here. There's something important to talk about. Oh dang, Jane's after me. Sorry, bro, okay, can't just leave Janie hanging. Bye. All right, but just so you know, I think Dirk is probably gonna make some sort of formal romantic overture towards Jake today. <gasps> what, really, what, really? I've been crunching the numbers all day on this. The percentage of probability is simultaneously bananas and through the roof. A complete disgrace of tropical fruit erupting from the peak of an unassuming domicile. Oh my, how do you know? Because I've aggregated thousands of subtle clues indiscernible to primitive human neurology and rammed them through my determinative infatuation engine at an astonishing speed of information. And also because I'm pretty sure it's what I would do if I were him, and, it, and which is literally the case. Also because he kind of told me, I guess. There's that. You know, you could just lead with that. I think people would believe you very well if you just led with that. Bananas are good, they have potassium. Yo, so fun fact, I don't actually like bananas that much. Like, I'll eat them. Like, that's fine. But, like, if somebody if somebody comes up to me and is like, yo, you want to get a banana from the grocery store? I'm like, yo, about that. Like, can we not, though? Can you just fucking stuff that where the sun don't shine, which is also your mouth, not mine, where the sun does shine? I don't know why I'm channeling my inner Dave right here. Well, this should be interesting. Did you tell Jaker? Not specifically. Man, does he does he even know how he feels? Well, the poor guy is, tor is tor 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 totally under siege from all sides. He knows well enough. I badged him with enough insincere solicitations to paint a pretty striking portrait of my cognitive progenitor's inclinations, even if he wasn't able to pick up on such hints from the man himself, which strikes me as statistically implausible. And that's not even me spe spewing more ironic AI bullshit. I was never that clear on that. Are you, like, both crunching on him? Or is it the real him and ironic for you? Or it's it's complicated. No, shit, says the robo-clone of the guy smitten with the guy everyone else is smitten with, including said robo cloning maybe? Oh, can we hold this thought? I have to answer Jamie, D Jane. Yeah, so Robo-Dirk is also into... What about Jake English makes everybody want to drop their pants? I don't understand. I don't understand. 
we all need to channel our inner Dave from time, days from time to time. You're right, though. You're right, though. You developed an allergy to raw fruit, so you, can eat, you can't eat bananas without your mouth and throat itching badly. Oh, I'm so sorry, Melody. That's horrific. Jake is just a beautiful idiot. Oh, my God. I don't even understand it, answered Jane. Is this a pester log? Yeah, continue previously. You, thank you. Thank you, Hussy, for being convenient. Anyway, if you're still here, I wouldn't really call my feelings ironic, though evidently I would enclose them in quotes. They're more like an echo of feelings once established in a biological context, though perhaps not particularly well materialized at that point in my life. Or his life. Whatever. They still feel real sometimes, and it can be pretty easy to get carried away with them. But most of the time, they present themselves as dense bodies of abstraction to be evaluated, like any kind of information. It's fair to say I have feelings about my feelings that are more genuine expressions of emotion than the ground-level feelings themselves. Does that make sense? Yes, sorry, distracted, important shit going on with Jane Z. Uh, that's fine. So to over underwhelmingly answer your question, no, I don't think I'm really into Jake. Not so much as an occasional, be, occasionally being subject to heavily arresting recalls of conflicted and sipping preteen episodes on the subject. I'm not even sure I can be into someone in a way you understand. Not that it would even matter if I was. I'm glasses. Damn. What? Sorry, I'm listening to you really, but I fucked up and I gotta make sure Jane doesn't run the file I sent. The virus? You sent it already? Sneaky. Oh, I'm such an ass. What are you two talking about? The bot line is, I'm a horrible friend. You could just tell her you sent an exploding file. No, then she'll think I'm shitty, and right now she thinks I'm super not shitty, and I don't want to blow it, and I think I'd rather pull a dirk and profess my undying feelings for her. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Wait, you have feelings for Jane? No, you dingnut, it was a joke. Oh my fucking god, if, Drake, if Dirk tells Jake about this shit, what about Jane? How's she gonna feel? Competing with a friend and all for a guy she can't even get up the nerve to say anything to. Poor Jane. It seems to be highly probable you are ensnared in the throes of your human romantic quandaries. Oh, shut up. I need a drink. Are you even talking to her anymore? It seems like you must be neglecting her side of the conversation. I'm in the middle of a dramatic pause. Calm your fucking tips, Bob. Oh, my gosh. They're all more unsexual, pretty much. How does one become allergic to a fruit? Uh, to all fruit? I mean, allergies can just develop. It's pretty. Uh, it's pretty brutal. It's called oral allergy syndrome. You're allergic to raw vegetables too. That is so rough. So you have to be like super, like a super carnival, right, Melody? I guess there's other things you can have that are that are unrelated, but let's see. Really? And then here we go. Anyway, I won't distract you for much longer. I just felt the need to tip you off to the 800-ton gorilla dragon's knuckles across the horizon. Will this gorilla eat those bananas flying out of the roof, you said? No airborne fruit will be safe. I guess this is to be presented as something like a word of caution. If it's me going through all this, hypothetically, I'm not drumming some limp-wristing shucksbuster on his ass and praying to the horse god's of irony for reciprocation. There'll be no rocking back and forth on pigeon-toed feet while my face flushes the blood of a thousand timid vishies. I'm not, I will not hold one tentative hand behind my head like a flustered asshole from an Asian cartoon, nor will an oversized bead of sweat overlap ludicrously with my visage. If it's me, I'm going all out. Oceans will rise, cities will fall, volcanoes will erupt. Probably, literally. Uh, what I'm saying is, is this going to be a scene, and bystanders need to brace themselves. Okay, about when is this big scene happening? Probably after the game begins, I expect he'll hold off on playing his hand until he and Jake are in the session. He's taken certain measures. For some reason, I think he's latched onto this notion that functioning as the client of a player is customarily a one-way pass to make out city with that player. Everything with him and me is a matter of assiduous, tactful uh, forethought. Making a play to get his Jones on for J-Man is no different. Not sure what any of this quite means, but it sounds spectacular. I can't wait, though I'm still kind of torn about how to feel about his chances versus Jane's chances. What do I say to Jane about this? It's hard being a totally sweet, as totally sweet a friend as me. It's hard, and no one understands. <laughs> Lol. Sorry to hear that. As ever, I remain an autonomous, dispassionate witness of oddity that that is human interaction, while maintaining no investment with either outcome. Yeah, but yes, anyway, I have to go. I have to prove some shit to Jane. Prove what? Oh, you know, just subjection, some shit to the old madriga mad riggers. It seems you just said madrigogs. What are madrigogs? <laughs> 17, uh, 17 R, bro. 17 R? Oh, oh, I see. The madrigogs. Cool. When cooked, that protein is shrink so you can eat them. Gotcha, gotcha. Oh, later, bro. Oh, God. Later, bro. It's an L. Damn it, Roxy. Why do you be like this? So, Jane or Dirk? Oh. What do you... 
No one. No one for be, should be with Jake. Jake is too fucking oblivious. Jake is too fucking... No one. No one. I'm rooting for no one. Go find a fulfilling relationship with somebody who knows how to take a hint. <laughs> she tries to write later, but just uh, press the 7 instead of R. That is... Or instead of 8. Yeah, that is an excellent, like... Excellent joke. I like it. Let's see. Janie, it seems to me that there is a probability of you being a huge tight ass. Yada, yada, yada. Here we go. Ready a purifier. We're back over here. You push some buttons and mess with the knobby deals and get t totally set to subject some shit to the, mad to the madrigogs or the mad riggers. This is so cute. I really like it when Roxy is drawn in, like, hero mode. She looks so cute. The dude. Nani. None of the fuck I, li I like. I like how Frigglish is like, what the fuck did you just bring here? Huh. Huh. Hiss. Poof. Aim. Huh? What was that? Pounce. No. No. Don't purify the cat. No. <gasps> no. Frigglish engage kill mode. No. You decide to consult with the colonel's bottomless wisdom. Good grief, this thing is huge. You can kill a cat if you dropped it. No. 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 The act one callback. No. Plummet. Roxy's face. This explains continued tragically. Take the book. Yep, he's dead. Totally Sasha crush. You just know that julep guzzling bastard scrambling up his echelon ladder as we speak, chuckling to himself while he fills his pocket with ill-gotten boon dollars. La oh, go ahead, old man. Laugh it up. Oh, Roxy. You guess you'll have to do something with the body now. Maybe a funeral? That sounds like the perfect way to say goodbye to an old friend. But the environment outside isn't particularly hospitable for a burial these days. It also sounds like kind of a depressing to host a funeral by yourself. Oh, Roxy. It's also probably best to just send him back where he came from. Years ago when you were exploring the rab you lab, you found a machine somewhat similar to the ectobiology equipment. Without knowing what it was, you activated it, and out came this friendly cat in a handsome little suit. You still aren't sure where he came from, though given the timestamp and coordinates on the machine, you have a feeling he belonged to your mother. If that is true, you feel bad about stealing your cat, let alone killing him. But you can never bring yourself to send him back. Until now, of course. She probably would want to know what happened to her disappearing cat, even if it meant discovering him dead a little while later. The device uses a huge amount of power. Its entire power supply was almost fully depleted using it the first time. You stockpiled as much uranium as you could for another test run. Looks like you this uh, looks like this will be it. And so everything loops upon everything. Turns out that Rose's mom threw such an elaborate funeral because she felt guilty. Yeah. Interesting. Time after time. Oops, Hildux is full. Gotta swap with something else. Probably as good as an excuse to break in the new fenestrated plane. Did she know, though? I don't know. See, that's the thing. Like, I don't know how the memories between these different versions will actually work with themselves, because I also theorize that, like, this will have an influence on... So, basically, this is a cosmic circle jerk, where B2 will cause A1, and A1 causes A2, which causes B1, which causes B2, like... Like, you see what I'm saying? Like, that's, that's my current theory um, with everything. So who knows, like, if there's, like, a collective, like, unconscious memory between different versions of themselves. Yeah, but they seem to have hazy understandings of them considering the way bro is training Dave. That's kind of what I'm thinking. Like, like, it's just, like, part of who they are. You know what I mean? I don't know. That's kind of an unconfirmed thing for me. I don't know if anybody else knows about it. You swap the bottle with the one dead cat with one dead cat in it for another. You often use this little guy to break the planes, like an intrepid test pilot. Not while it's in the bottle, though. That would be ridiculous, since the bottles are sort of just inventory abstractions. You have to break the bottle first before you can get any serious about breaking some glass. Let's see. Clear some space. Zoom. Now I get this bullshit out of the way. It can't work like this with everything jammed down there in the corner. It's bad enough. Uh, you're hammered. Break some glass. Zoom. Okay, we're just going to do this, I guess. Your test pilot flew back, which means the link between planes is working and stable. You can't even remember which one you linked up to. You guess you'll find out the fast way. Jump in. 
This seems dangerous. Youth roll. Who? I don't like that this is a mechanic now, jumping between the planes. Oh my goodness. The sufferer remembered. That's true, though. That's true, though. From the perspective of anyone observing the two windows from the outside, transport looks instantaneous. But for the traveler, there's always this gap of void between them. In your experience, the more significant the journey between the planes is, the wider the gap. This one is small enough to be negligible, though, probably because it leads to somewhere else in your house. You set up a bunch of the, uh, these up as little shortcuts to places around your house, as well as some places nearby, like the lab. It's convenient around a hop way to hop around, though it isn't without some risk. You're still not sure what happens if one of the planes loses power while in transit. That's terrifying, other than the objects periodically getting sliced in half, as if they're straddling the plane when the plug is pulled. You haven't come up with a good way to observe the consequences from the inside yet without using yourself as a guinea pig. And you're in as much hurry to try that as you are to look up the correct spelling of guinea pig, because seriously, fuck those particular pigs! Let's see. Vroosh! Whoa, Vroosh. Okay, we're playing Portal. Got it. Hello. What are these things? I don't see anything in this room. Hmm. Which is a bit silly to guess, but why would they also have memories of different people in the sufferer? Uh, yeah. Hmm. They're, they're not, though, and there's a lot of things to apply. There's at least some hazy memories from the post-scratch versions of people. Understand, like, how Rose's mom got into ectobiology and even knew about hair clock paradox clones needing to exist. Yeah, like, I don't know. Maybe it'll be explained later, but I think that the, you could also just chalk all of this up to the fact that, like, between realities, these other selves are approximate versions of who they would be in different circumstances. So maybe it wasn't guilt or may, and whether you want to chalk that up to like some like sort of collective unconscious between them, it could just be that these are who they were always they were always going to be in any reality. You know what I mean? I think it's a fuzzy enough thing that it doesn't get explained because time travel. It's like how stable time loops. If like if you look at stable time loops, they don't make sense if they have a beginning. But if you just abstract away and you say this is the way that things are, change the panel. You're getting dizzy. I think it's just approximate, approximations of reality that get imposed on different timelines, if that makes sense. Well, when you are quite through with that tomfoolery, you find yourself in your household's observatory. You keep it cool in here and use it to store pumpkins you've purified from around the world, especially from Jake. That guy is just stinking rich with pumpkins on his dumb tropical island. It would never occur to you otherwise to be so grabby with pumpkins, but they just happen to be the most easily purifiable vegetable on the planet for some reason, and, and that makes no sense. It's not like you can just stop swiping vegetables. You've got your own mysterious reasons. Hey, look incoming. Incoming message. Hey, you, you! It has been so long since we've seen you, you! Oh my goodness. Sometime I should, I, I should react to this funny series on YouTube called HLVRI. Half-Life VR, but the AI is self-aware. Okay, sure, Rain. Also, it's good to see you. I will, I will take a look at it. Uh, let me write that down. H-L-V-R-A-I YouTube series. Huh. Also, banning the word pumpkin? Okay. I'm putting on the timer for five minutes. For five minaroos. <clears throat> there you are. Tricky one to track down you are. Oh, yeah. I don't know why I've been goofing around here for hours. Oh, no doubt. Me thinks it has less to do with your actual whereabouts as it does with your virtues as a hero of void. Well, there we go. Okay, backing this up. Something of void. Something of void. Dropping that shit. Maybe we knew that before, maybe not. I feel like that's the first time. It makes sense with her going into a literal void. Wasted a word banning on a word that doesn't exist, <laughs> lol. Possibly thief of void? I don't know. Chat keeps lagging for you. Rip, ripperoni. Void, let's go. Let's see. Okay, but you never actually say what this stuff like that means. You always say it though. It's, is, it, is this more cause, uh, ca casual spoiler shit? Causal! And yes, somewhat. However, with these spoilers by their nature, the more time that passes for you, the less relevant it becomes to guard those secrets. And as you approach your entry, details I have obscured will become plainly evident. So I see no ho harm in loosening my tongue on certain matters the closer you get to the appointed hour. So you're saying I have, like, these magical void powers. Yes. Sounds kind of like shitty and boring powers to me. Like, what can they do besides make me invisible to an alien sometimes? 
The void aspect is fascinating, though. Its heroes preside over the absent, the essence of lack or nothingness, the obfuscation of knowledge or its outright destruction. Snooze! Well, I think it's very wonderful. <laughs> oh, that face. Anyway, one can hardly draw many conclusions about a player by an aspect alone. The aspect is channeled more specifically by the assets of one's class. So when you can't, when you can see me, when I'm doing my voidy thing or whatever, what do you see is just a black screen? Pretty much. Hmm. Hmm? It's just about the footage my mom does that too. Like blackouts and stuff. Mom was a notorious scourge to the pi a paparazzi, or I mean, the one who I'm supposed to be genetically descended from. Well, mom, you know what I mean. I understand what you're getting at, yes, and it's certainly possible that we may have some common ground with our ancestors when it comes to our aspects and the way our abilities reveal themselves to us. I cannot rule this out, but there's always more to examine. For instance, a hero of life and a hero of doom have aspects as different as can be, but if their classes are different enough as well, that is, one active and one passive, remarkably there is a chance they could end up with very similar abilities. Well, that's fair. Players' abilities that may also manifest in ways in defiance with their aspects if they are heavily resistant to their true calling or if corrupted by some outside, outside force. I'm <laughs> Rose. Getting corrupted by outside force. Let's see, let's see. Also, remember the other player I just kind of specified? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's the principi principi of the thing. That's a good catch. It's a very good catch. Roxy is reflected on a certain pair of shades. Oh, interesting. Yeah, Rose is light and Roxy is void. Yeah, that's very interesting the way that everything like turns. Hmm. The same shades that Kanaya used to view Rose going to uh, Grimdark, a pair of shades owned by, I don't even remember now. I don't even remember now. Like, I, it has been so long. Hmm. Our old pal, Horseman. Freaking Equius. Too many connections. Too many connections. What aspects would I guess for the other kids? I mean, I have most of their aspects. It's uh, it's their class that I'm actually missing. Equius, the heir of void. Yeah. You'd love to see God here, Equius, in the Alpha Timeline. That'd be terrifying. That'd be terrifying. Uh, let me finish this page, and I need to take a break. I'm getting a little, like, dizzy. I might need some water. You still love the, the void of air jokes with his death? <laughs> um, but it is rather clear to me that you are one who embraces her aspect quite heartily, even if you're not aware of it. So, deep down, I'm super psyched about nothingness. Yeah, sounds about right. Oh, hey, damn. Oh, damn, hey. I almost forgot that I, I had the really short but cool dream, and I figured you might like this. Oh, yes, everyone is having important dreams as we near our mutual entries. This is lovely. Please tell. I saw someone I think was supposed to be my daughter. Can you? Do you know if that's true? Can you describe her? Well, she looked kind of like me, but in this orange getup and uh, with a yellow sun on it. She sounds to me like a well-known figure of legend, or at least well-known to those who make the study of such matters into their all-consuming pastimes. I believe you saw the Seer of Light. Okay, so, okay, let's say she's deaf bad. Does that mean she's my daughter or spoilers? Exactly how many spoilers are we talking? I would normally be, it would normally be my instinct to supply a vague response here, but I think that your heart has already told you the answer and that such my secrecy would be purposeless. So yes, that she was. Ah, oh, yes, I knew it. Then Space Lady, can you tell me who is this lucky, who this lucky fella is? Fella, what do you mean? Oh, come on, you know. Who do I get future busy with to make the light see a babies? Oh, yes. Perhaps my sluggishness on the uptake. We are very different species reproductively and familiarly, remember? Mm, shakes my head. Sighs deeply muttering lalians to yourself. That is something I cannot say, or that is, should not say. Oh, come on, you're already telling me stuff. Oh, please do not press me for information. It makes me feel terribly guilty. You have no idea how I would fancy revealing everything and exchange our, use, our stories endlessly. But I must show some restraint. Please, what if I guess stuff? Is it Strider? Does he, like, get ungay for a while or such? <laughs> or probably doesn't even uh, know what that means on account of being extra... Or you probably don't know what that means on account of being extraterrestrial. Because aliens be gay, too. Is that a thing? Being space gay? Um, poor Yu Yu is getting very uncomfortable with this. See, you you agrees? <laughs> I mean, a little bit, a little bit. I am not embarrassed. I just don't know what you're talking about. Oh, but seriously, is it him? 
Um, maybe? Or is it like some ectobiological shit instead and a dude ain't really involved? Um, maybe. Man, wouldn't that just figure? Wouldn't that suck? Why do you have to go and confirm my bleak, dudeless future? I confirm no such thing, Roxy. You are being frightfully difficult. You just keep pushing and pushing, and I can make my composure only for so long. Okay, I'm sorry. If you really are curious about the events surrounding your daughter's origin, you can always ask her in person when you meet her. So you mean, I'm going to meet her in the game? Oh. Well, yes, but I'm not sure if I should have revealed that to you just now. You'll see what happens when you push me. There's only so much to keep track of, and it gets very difficult to remember what information was revealed at what time when you get uh, flustered. Yu Yu is currently chat, guys. Yu Yu is currently chat. Um, the representation of chat. <laughs> okay, so without pushing and flustering you, uh, flush frustrating you, let me know, uh, see if I have my facts right. I will be my cool as hell daughter from the future in this game. Yes, basically. And I will meet my mother in this game. Yes. And the game will let me resurrect her from the dead, and that's what I'm going to do. The game provides a mechanism for the revival of the deceased. Yes, it is called a kernel sprite, and you are free to gather the remains of any dead party you choose to revive that individual in the form of a sprite. The sprite will then serve as a helpful spirit guide on your journey. Ooh, that is not all the information. That is not a real resurrection. True, not spoiling is hard. I appreciate all the effort you guys put into maintaining the non-spoilerage. Yeah, but you dod cleverly dodged the question, and that's how you say it works, but will I do that? I believe it was a very forthright answer. If you play the game, you will meet your daughter. If you play the game, you will meet your mother too, simple as can be. Narrows eyes with drunken suspicion. Yo, Yu Yu is being very clever, very true. Being very clever, not spoiling the details there. I like it. By the way, I can say pumpkins again. Spoiler, he is, is tricky. Huh. So yeah, to confirm my confirmation spree, you are most you are maybe kind of hinting that the ecto shenanigans that lead to the birth of my daughter, just like I am descended by, by from my mom through some sort of, uh, you are maybe kind of hinting that there are ecto shenanigans that lead to the birth of my daughter, just like I am descended from my mom through some sort of ecto similar bio process. Those are definitely things, some things which you believe could be true or not true. Lol, you're such a shitty liar. I am not any kind of liar. Come on, what's your answer? Yes, no. Or should I say, yes, no, you. You! I choose you! <laughs> I love yous. I do love yous. You're silly. You're silly and cute and bad at lying. But I really don't lie. I'm not deceitful by nature, but in order to protect the integrity of a certain s outcomes while still being helpful to you, I guess I'm learning the art of deception through honesty, which it turns out, as well intended as may be, still kind of comes across as a savvy, comes across to a savvy lass of yourself as just another kind of equivocation. Though I guess I shouldn't be so startled that a rogue avoid could be bewilder me so. Yep, rogue avoid! I was right! I was well, like, wait, no, no, I wasn't right. I said thief. This is actually rogue avoid. That might be different. That might technically be different. Yu Yu dropping more spoilers. Come on now. Gotta go be back soon. See what you get back, Nanois. All you need to do is not mention things that haven't happened yet. Exactly. Exactly. Yu Yu is very well liked. Yu Yu is a lot of fun. Yu Yu is a ton of fun. Void players are said, are said in text to have a way with flummoxing, even those with plans beyond mortal understanding. And I'm far from anyone like that. Just a girl who wants to help. Ooh, this is a long thing. Yeah, and then we see this. This is Trollian right here. This is Trollian. Oh, God. Okay, guys, I gotta take a quick break. I'm, like, getting dizzy. I have not eaten much. I will BRB. Okay, well, since you're so nice, I'll promise not to use my wig. Oh, wait, wait, real quick. I got distracted by the word ban. I realized something very, very important while I was getting a Hot Pocket. Because we've deduced that there is a dystopia going on, it does, in fact, drastically reduce the possibility that this reality's Rose did, in fact, fuck a troll, which makes me sad. Because it's probably, it's probably the reason why she knows all this trail terminology is because her Imperial Condes has, like, condescension, has given us, like, uh, has indoctrinated troll, um, troll cultures and stuff like that. So the quadrants and everything, all of that. Or does it? I mean, I'm still hoping that Rose fucked a troll. I'm still doing it. I'm still doing it. I'm still hoping, but it just has reduced the possibility. Because also we know that um, Roxy has is at least ectobiology, ectobiologically graded. That could, there could be a troll in the mix there. We don't know for sure. How about an IRL letter ban? 
Like, what letter would be... That'd be, ooh, that'd be hard to do, because then I'd have to, like, trans... That's way harder than one word, even. Because then I have to transform every single word that has it on the fly. Damn, I'm just gonna have to do, like, no vowel interpretations of everything. Well, since you're so nice, I'll promise not to use my Wicked Void powers, uh, RE basic common sense, plus skills and deduction to bust you up so bad. I'd be ever so grateful. Then what about uh, what about giving you the whole third degree? What does it tell me? What does it mean to be a rogue of void? That's what I am, right? Yes, I can tell you plenty about that. Oh, shit. I need a page for class specs, guys. I need a page for class specs. Here we go. Uh, an entire page dedicated only to class specs. So let me start with classes. And we're going to just start here. Rogue. Passive. Imagine the whole stream without any of the vowels. I would have to, like, be like, be like, hey. It would be very difficult. That made can I his name? Can I? Can I? I would have to overthink every word I speak. Yeah, it would be just like the entire the entire stream would be dead. Let's see. Oh, my cat is being obnoxious right now. A rogue is a passive class. You see, there are passive and active classes. Okay, actually, it is really weird to me that passive is plus, that passive is plus and active is minus. Pa but I'm going to write that down. Passive plus active minus. Some are more strongly passive or, str or active than others. The, the plus minus distinction can mean many things, but could be roughly summed up in this way. Active classes exploit their aspect to benefit themselves, while passive classes uh, use their aspect to benefit others. But of course, there's plenty more to it, and that rule is in no way absolute, only a starting point for understanding dichotomy. So this is others and self. Writing down all these rules, guys, is going to be one of those rules. Time for everyone to say their class specs? Yeah, like, if there is not one that has been spoiled, like, if it's not a spoiler, like, if everything has been, like, covered, that'd be awesome. Um, let's see. All right, if there, if there, if we have seen all of them, I guess I'm trying to say, and it's not spoiled. Your class spec, as opposed, as according to the Exendic Zodiac, is Knight of Light? Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Heir of Doom, made Mage of, of Mind Reporting in? Interesting, interesting. Rogue of Light. Wait, where does it say passive is plus? It says it right there, right here. There are passive, and then it in parentheses says plus. Let's see. Welcome back, Minoys. Huh, you never noticed that? Yeah, it's, it's a little bit weird to me. But I, but, but, so what I'm thinking is, is that passive, like, because you're giving it, you're affecting others, maybe that's why it's plus? I don't know. Who knows? You're a rogue, you're a rogue of void and rogue of life. Interesting. But let's see what these mean, because I need to understand what these mean. But of course, there's plenty more to it, and the rule is in no way absolute. I'm only a starting point for my understanding the, the dichotomy. Um, you mean kind of like offensive versus defensive magic in an RPG? Sure, that's a fine way of looking at it. Classes can always come in plus minus pairs with significant disparity between them. While rogue is passive, a thief would be a far more active counterpart. Okay, so, okay, 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 okay. So, cool, There, there's always pairs. So thief and rogue are pairs. Okay, I need to restructure how I'm writing this then. I need to restructure how I'm writing this. So I'm going to do rogue plus... Thief minus. My notes need to be organized for this. My notes need to be super organized for this. It also said that you're Dursite and you're so not. Hmm. Huh. Probably Knight though, because Car Cat, Blue Glass, gotcha. Blue Knight of Blood. Let's see, let's see. Um. While a rogue is passive, a thief would be its far more active counterpart. The rogue and the thief classes tend to be assigned to females, not exclusively, but commonly. Okay, so there's a gender disparity there. Other classes tend to lead, uh, other classes lean more toward male assignment, while others are exclusively male, just so they're, they're exclusively female, like my class. I want to know your class. Tell me your class. 
There's that's a bit of a tangent though. To answer your question about being a rogue, I should tell you that both classes and plus minus pairs tend to have very similar descriptions. In this case, in this case, a rogue or a thief. I, I just realized my voice is off. A rogue or a thief is one who steals. Quite simple, really. But whether the class is plus or minus makes all the difference. It is the great indicator as to how a hero will make use of the aspect. Obviously, one who steals benefits others, benefits the benefit self. So basically, a thief is like the asshole class. So the players say, step off, shit's mine, sucks, whereas a rogue is basically Robin Hood. If that is a reference to your culture provides it to a suitable comparison, then absolutely. So I'm essentially the Robin Hood of Void, which I'm not still sure what that means. What the fuck does that actually mean? Understandable. But I guess Robin Hood's pretty cool, thiefing up loot from peeps who got too much and then all sugar daddy and out onto the needy like a boss. Just don't have a clue how that works with Void. Yes, it is one of the more conceptually nebulous pairings, I agree. And I can't say I know how a smashing good deal about the nature of a Void player's path, since the aspect is by definition inscrutable to those who it does not choose. But I can at least tell you this. If you ever to enjoy the full ascension as a rogue of Void, you will be able to do some completely astonishing things. Like what? Oh, no, 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 you will not pry this out of me. Not to preserve causality, but to keep the surprise in store for you. It would be on, It would not be honorable of me to dis spoil the discovery should you be fortunate enough to realize your potential. Well, about that, I so sort of feel sort of stupid about this, but I've been giving all my friends this whole dramatic spiel about not wanting to even play this thing, so I might have fucked stuff up already. Is that so? It's, it's so, and I guess I still haven't decided what to do. There are props, props and cons to both things. Would you mind explaining them? Okay, either I don't play, and I get this kind of passive-aggressive revenge of the witch for killing my mom, and then thereafter keep staying here and being lonely, or I do play, and spoilers are as follows. Sweet powers for me, check. Try generational lawn family reunion, reunion, <laughs> check as fuck. Meet all my friends, heck a check, and smo others, and some more other stuff. All fine points. Is there nothing I can do to make the decision easier? Nah, but thanks. I've, I, you already have anyway. I'll probably play. Wonder if I can tell Dice uh, Try without looking like a waffle ass chump. What's a waffle ass chump? Is it Earth Cuisine? Uh, no, no, it's just a shithead. This doesn't matter though. I can't play to like go deliver the dead cat thing back in time to my mom or something. Oh, that's another statement that doesn't make a good deal of sense to me, but if it's important to you, then Godspeed. I'm so pleased to hear you are leaning in favor of participating with the rest of us. I promise we'll have a ball together. Now, I have a busy schedule to keep up with, so I must go, but please remember you can always contact me if you have any questions. Don't be a stranger, love. Ta. Ooh. F for alt rose. Yeah, yeah F for alt rose indeed. Remember Visca is the steal, thief of light, stealing all the luck for herself? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Which reminds me, I need to write down aspects, because that's the one aspect we actually kind of know about. Um, we kind of know what light does, and it has to do with, it's like related to luck, or probabilities. Probabilities. Understanding all the classes is really hard. The only one you understand are air, knight, thief, prince, and you can't even mention a few others. Hussey is so good with making you just know what these characters sound like. Yeah, really, really, the right. So, like, so even if the the, the pacing of the comic is, like, a fucking, like, schnozberry train that, like, jumps into a martini lass and goes over into a volcano, and then you end up on a tropical island, and then you're also then suddenly in New Jersey and nothing's happening for ten years, and then you're back in the volcano... Um, the writing itself is very good at making you know the characters. Yeah, but it's also literal light. Yeah, no, that's fine. That's fine. You'll never, uh, you'll never understand people who say that homesick's writing is bad. Yeah, no, like the the writing itself, the dialogue is good. The dialogue is good. The pacing is questionable, and at times to the comic's detriment. Um, you, you lose a lot of people in Act 1, from what I understand. Um, I'm not surprised. Um, and it sets up a lot of important stuff, but it does not do a good job of grabbing you in the beginning. Um, the thing that grabs people nowadays is the overwhelming declaration of the fandom that Homestuck does, in fact, get good. You know what I mean? And some people still love Act 1, but it, I'm just saying, like, the things that, uh, the things that really draw people in kind of pull them. Hussey messes up the pacing on purpose, you think? He actually does. Hussey very much messes up the pacing on purpose. I don't think that necessarily makes it a good story. Like, good for the story. It is good for the jokes. It is good for the jokes. 
there's a difference between good writing and popular. Yeah, I'm just saying, like, if the fandom wasn't so adamant about the fact that Homestuck gets good, quote unquote gets good later, um, then I don't think as many people would get into it later. You know what I mean? Act one is very bad at grabbing people, but very good at establishing characters and very good on rereads. Absolutely. Absolutely. I can see that. I can definitely see that. What I mean, Act One is great. Yeah, some people really enjoy Act One. It has its own kind of flair. Let's see. You're fairly sure this window will take you to one of the windows you've set up in the lab. There's more than one way to find out if this is true, you guess, but there is only one way to involve what that involves doing what the inebriated do best, which is falling down. He starts out good, then Homestead, then later Homestead gets marketable, able to be popular. I get what you're saying, re-recursive. Let's see. Whereas if the entirety of Homestuck was like Acts 1 through 3, it would not be po able to get this popular. Yeah, because like it, it has a very big tonal change in Act 4. Um, it, Ro Roxy Descend, let's go. Whoosh! Oh, we're going to the character select screen? I feel like there should be music here, but there isn't. Um, interesting. Dream self is ascending while life self is... Hey, 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 Roxy. Roxy, your dream self is kind of going upsies. What does that even mean? Can you meet your dream self in the void? The tone is car cat. The tone it changes into. You're right, though. Um, I'm going to just write down that Roxy saw dream self in void. Real quick. So... If, if Dirk's, if Dirk isn't too long, we could probably fit in Dirk's uh, character select screen. We could probably do that. I'm, pro I'm willing to, to do that, assuming it's not like super long. Time to be the Strider. It starts a, ton it starts a tonal shift around Act 4 to be more character focused and less plot focused. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, it was pretty, it had a lot of character focused stuff before, but yeah, I really started to connect with the characters around like end of act three, uh, beginning of act four, if that makes sense. Well, yeah, plot, I mean, plot's still happening, but like character, just because it's character focused doesn't mean plot isn't happening. It's really what's, what's the driving force. You are now Dirk. What the hell was going on here again? That's right. You were launched into the bulbous cleft of Paradox Space's huge foam ass. We're hoping to trouble you. In, we're, we were hoping to trouble you for a bit of context. Something to set our watches to, if you'd be so kind. Perhaps your successive actions will oblige us. Ha, <laughs> JK, young bro. We know you don't give a shit. Go ahead and do whatever feels right. Go get your sword. You retrieve your unbreakable katana, a real hard sword for a real hard dude. It was said to be forged by the ancient, ancient otaku master over the heat of a roaring manga fire. <laughs> Okay, it was cold in an ancient spring where virgin horses nicker and bathe. It was said, and was said to only could be used by one whose pointy anime shades were deemed sweet it, sweet enough. Okay, are we gonna? Are you really gonna call out your Kamina stealing shit right there from the get go? And whose hair existed in a perpetually sculpted state of looking completely fucking awesome? All the things were said by you. The thing about Act 5 is that a lot of it is fast-forwarding the trolls up to the current time, and a lot of that involves shit we've already seen, so we gotta get caught up on the complex interpersonal relationships between the 12 characters. The fact that it did such a good job of making all the 12 characters feel unique and their interactions feel unique is really a credit to the writing. Oh, that's a nice little detail. It wasn't just resting in ca on Cal's arms, it was in Cal's arms, and then whoosh, gets unfolded. Puppet kind stress abyss. Terrifying. You like to juggle around a few different allocations in your portfolio besides Blade Kind, mostly ironically. You take a certain amount of pride in being able to beat practically anyone's ass down with a puppet, a martial discipline for which there is a startling variety of techniques. Uh, fancy... What is this? Fancy... Ant... Fa fancy... San uh, Santa Kind is a straight-up shits and giggles specimen, though nobody's quite sure how to extract damage from a foe using an extremely elaborate Santa figurine. Oh, fancy Santa Kind. But if anyone can figure it out, it's probably you. Give Lil' Cal a nervous fist bump. Nervous? That's absurd. There's no reason to be nervous around Lil' Cal. Lil' Cal is the shit. Fancy Santa kind. You're the witch of Polkritude, apparently? What? Is Polkritude an aspect?
You didn't remember Fancy uh, Fancy, Fancy Santa? I kind of figured you thought it was a lot further on. Oh, Poker 2 is a plot problem sleuth thing. Gotcha, gotcha. Oh, Jailbreak? Okay, thank you. Oh, got a little cow. He's been around as long as you can remember. You were practically raised by that puppet. He was a much better guardian to you than the Hollywood superstar bro of yours ever was. He's such a good listener. You share with him all your most private thoughts and hopes and dreams, and sometimes you snuggle up to him for a nice nap. That makes me very uncomfortable about Dirk. And bottom line, puppets are awesome, and that's really all there is to say on the matter. Admire Fancy Santa. No, Fancy Santa's so cute. Fancy Santa's so cute. Look at this pompous little asshole. What a god-awful piece of shit this thing is. Fuck off. Fuck off, Dirk. You're not even sure why you keep these things around. The miasma of tackiness that surrounds them is almost enough to outstrip their irony value. Almost. Great robotic friend. You say what's up to this dude over here and exchange a unique series of handshakes and fist bumps. His name is Square Wave. You build him to, uh, to have rap-offs with now and then. He's an enthusiastic rapper and gives it his all whenever you duel, but he's pretty easy to destroy. You never lost a match against him. You've only built one other robot rap bot besides him. His name is Sawtooth. You designed him to be an unbeatable in a rap off, and he is. You never want to match against him. You hope to one day, but you're not going to hold your breath. His flow is just that insane. You keep one of these his spare heads over there on your desk, but otherwise you don't see much of him. It's been months since your last encounter. He presumably spends his time traveling the world, annihilating any rapper foolish enough to challenge him. Examine the wardrobe. You tell Square Wave to scoot out of the way so you can get a load of your sweet fashions. Aw, it looks like he really wanted to rap with you. Sorry, guy. Maybe another time. This is your wardrobe of fire. It ma automatically rotates your fashions whenever you feel like it. Look at how fast Dirk is. Dirk is super fast. I like her Santa's canceled. Rude. Very rude. Do not cancel me. Do not cancel puppets. We're canceling Lil Cow. Automagically. The fact that I said automagically... You know, it's funny that you, like, call that out as a word... I, I, I do software. I'm a, I'm a software engineer. We use the word auto magically all the time to describe like frameworks and stuff doing stuff. I guess Kyle gets some sound of super speed to everyone having it like Gamzee. Oh, maybe. Maybe. Or they're just fast. <laughs> you bust out a tank top, which is the go to solution for hard dudes. You want to show off their guns. It is a very strong look, you think. Oh, no. Oh, no, the inner equius. What the hell is that on your arm? Oh, no. No, the face. Oh, that that's just your sick ink featuring a legendary cultural icon of deep personal significance. What is even the big deal? Rip Stiller. Poor bastard. Had to go and get all tangled up in your bro's crazy, complicated life. As for the other, you're a studious pop culture scholar of all eras, a sharp critic of that reflection in the mirror we hold up to our society. You seek truth in the most vivid mosaic of, all, of our most shameless obsessions. Your interest in these cartoon ponies is made strict, is strictly academic, okay? No, seriously. What? Okay, fine, you love this particular little rainbow horse unironically. Is that such a crime? She's so spunky. <laughs> Loving Rainbow Dash. We got the brony. That's okay. Brony life. You love that Rainbow Dash poster? Like it, yeah, let Dirk enjoy what Dirk likes. A pile at the foot of your bed consists of hats, a few stray robo parts, and smuppets. Smuppets are a lovable sort of plush of your own design. You love everything about puppets. You were thinking about the craft of their production, their operation, cool new designs and such. If the cosmos didn't have more important plans for you, and if the world wasn't, weren't so fucked, you'd make a run at fame and fortune with your own puppet uh, enterprises, just like your bro did and with all his weird shit. You also love to keep a bunch of hats around, even though you never wear them. You love hats because all bros love hats and that's what you are a bro you consider wearing one every now and then but they don't really fit in the dimensions of your head yet and anyway it'd be next to criminal to mess up with your perfect hair instead you do the next best thing which is wearing a perfect a picture of one in your shirt and by the next best thing you're pretty sure you mean the vastly superior thing everybody you should all have shirt hats on your shirt if you like hats don't wear that shit don't wear the dirk will show us the way and Dirk Brony confirmed? Absolutely. All these callbacks. Indeed. Indeed. Let's see. Oh my god. Wow. Um let's see. Oh, there's a there's Calibulg over there. Huh. Interesting that that's just chilling out over here. Little bird. When you're not using the screen for other purposes, you have it set to rotate through some images by default, like a digital picture frame. The image flips between totally bitchin' horse puppets sort of stuff to a portrait of everyone's favorite comedy doer, Stiller and Wilson. 
your bro makes so many of these movies, it's hard to keep track of them. The series drifted almost imperceptibly from surrealist slapstick and inexplicable box office dynamic to veiled near subliminal protest pieces designed to expose the corporate tyranny slowly taking control of the world. Yo, Dave, alternate universe, Dave is actually like against the contest. I'm so happy. Let's go. You love the subtle implication that bro's bald also? Yeah, oh, that's fair, actually, by saying it doesn't fit his, uh, fit his hair, his head yet. I don't like it, though. I don't like Look at that beautiful hair. Look at the beautiful hair. It must be preserved for all eternity. The statement did not go unnoticed by the Baroness, and soon the conflict between your brother's media empire and Crocker Corps was a matter of public spectacle. The press has generally played up the rivalry as an extremely high-stakes display of performance art, and knowing your bro, there is surely at least some truth to this. Donald Glover won an Academy Award for his transcendental performance as Jerome. <laughs> yes! After succession spe acceptance speech, there was not a single dry eye in the house. His heroic effort on the silver screen was heralded by critics everywhere as a defining moment in cinematic history. Alas, the Batter Witch did not look upon his achievement as kindly. She had him assassinated. <gasps> the Batter Witch assassinated Donald Glover? Donald Glover? Well, okay, that's fine. There's a guy. There's another guy that looks like him named Childish Gambino. So I guess it's fine. Nothing. Nothing was lost. Nothing was lost. Let's see. Oh, oh, TOS. Oh God, I can't just skip the TOS. And that one is. Never mind what that one is. You can't stand around all day looking at movie stills and swole bunny men. There's still some other shit in your room to investigate. You switch back to your regular shirt. You weren't feeling the wife beater. The t-shirt says, I still got work to do. And while the other one says, the witch trailer is the party's at, and shredders don't party until it's good and fucking time to party. Derek's got a case of wide brain, which is a case of wide head. Rude. His head is perfectly, perfectly shaped. It isn't a microwave. It's your sendificator. Oh, the, the red microwave. Pretty much the only crocker tech you can bring yourself to use. It's just too handy not to. Just type the coordinates, pop in the thing you want to syndicate. It's interesting that both Dirk and Roxy have one piece of crocker core tech. His head is double the size of bro's head horizontal ways. Is it? Is it? Hmm. I guess that makes sense. Yeah. I guess you're not wrong. Um, okay, it has side, size restrictions. Obviously, you can only send stuff that can fit inside there. You had to send Jake your robot piece by piece, barely managing to squeeze the shiny melon head in there. He then dutifully assembled the robot himself. Poor fool. So jovially complicit in his own merciless jungle predation. It's all for the best, though. When you're through with English, he'll be a ruthless killing machine. Mark your words. Let's see. Yeah, both, both Bert, Dirk and Dave have a bird theme. Absolutely. Yo, Vordrello. Vordrello. I don't know. Where I like, it was like, yo, Vordrello. Yo, no, Vordrello, welcome. Welcome. I'm glad you can make it. Catch log Jerome plush. Vzhoop. You snap up the Jerome plush in your tech hop modus. Okay, hello. How does, where did it go? Where did it go? Why did it? Interesting. His modus is often employed in rap battles, but it's a bit more elegant and sophisticated than what most hash rap artists traditionally employ, like the more arbitrarily numeric hash maps and hash tables. The cards are arranged in shade columns and groove rooms. Everything in the same column has to rhyme. Everything in the same row has to have some thematic similarity. God damn it, it's almost as bad as June's. Organizing everything gets complicated and weaponizing your inventory through rap lyrics takes some serious skill. For instance, the third groove row just kind of got railroaded into becoming an orange soda row. So now you've been rolling with it recently. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, the fourth row is pegged for stuff associated with cool bros. Uh, the second row is all about dolls, puppets, that stuff. The Dromey plush is clearly suitable for that row and rhymes with crush, so that works out. Oh my god, it's complicated. Oh, it's also got a little cute little, like, little, cute little stuff to a little bit of a baby cat over there. You might need to consider a new name. Yo, yo, I believe in you. Like the Vordrello. Let's go. Dave is much more obvious with all the crows, though. Yeah. No, that's fair. This is a complicated modus. Well, conceptually, it makes sense. It's just it would be complicated to utilize. He just has a fucking grenade, does he? Oh, shit, you're right up in the top left. I didn't even notice. You're right, though. He's just going to yeet it. And then you have some perfectly dope rhymes like Santa, Fanta, Fago, Game Bro, Do and Shoe. And there's also Smuppet and Orjet, which frankly you think is pretty weak, but hey, the modus allows it, so whatever. Then there are times you have to be creative with naming stuff to get to fit, like calling a skateboard a four-wheel device to get it to rhyme with Slice. And that's just another facet to the craft. 
Capture like a sweet, sweet, sweet bro push, push. Bro and Fago, maybe? You might as well, uh, yeah. You grab the sweet blow uh, off your bread. It intersects quite conveniently with plush groove and the Fago shade. Okay, okay, nice going. Capture log hella Jeff plush. Oh no. Least but not last but not least, there's nothing here that rhymes with hella Jeff. It really isn't worth jumping through a lot of linguistic hoops to put this thing in right now, so you just forget it. You have to pick your battles, you know? You already had another name, but it appears to be taken on Twitch and you can't change it. Oh, well, I mean, hey, I like you, your name as is. Like, I like your name as is. Vordreller is a good name. Don't we all just have grenades? I mean, if you live in Texas. Take sword. There we go. You pick up the mighty sword. The easiest thing here to do is to ditch the slice, stick the sword in the weapons row, and rhyme it with board. He wrote a lot of junk like this manufactured over the years. He patented the technology for producing three-dimensional JPEG artifacts to make products shittier than was ever previously imaginable. He made a killing off of them. Not because anyone bought this garbage, but because they were so cheap to manufacture, their cost was actually negative. Therefore, miraculously netting in profit for every unit produced. He made so much money this way, he had enough to finance manned space missions to haul the hideous unwanted JPEG shit off Earth and launch it into the sun. But years thereafter, every now and then, someone would report a stray, shitty skateboard slowly drifting back into Earth's atmosphere. People would pray they would burn up on re-entry, but they never would. Man, that's some unreal air. That's some unreal air. The name Sword is just incredibly funny for you. It's good. It's a good... It's a, it, It's just... It's a simple, good joke. Yo, that air is unreal. Oh, look, Square Wave saw you messing with your Silidex and thought you were preparing for a rap battle. He's kind of like an eager pet dog, and you made the mistake of picking up his leash. Now he thinks you were going for a walk. You hate to break his heart, but you just don't have the time. Your concentrated concentration is divided enough as is. Be your dream self. Among the many ways you tend to multitask is by maintaining an ever-alert dream self. There's a lot to keep an eye on when it comes to uh, the cloak and dagger politics of Durst, especially these days. Can't let your guard down for a second. Examine the sleazy Dursite rag. Yep, and this is where we saw that Jane had died. Huh. Who even took this picture? Who even took this picture with the shadow of Jack here? Like, who took this? You know what I mean? Like, with the shadow of Jack right there. They, like, did, did Jack submit this picture himself? Like, come on now. Remember how the, co the stuff cost negative artifact risk? Ah. Ah. Jack, did he take a picture with his knife? Uh, oh, he's got a photo knife. Gotcha. Hussy took it? Oh, that's fair, though. That's fair, though. It's the latest issue of the Inquiring Carapician, touting the recent assassination of Prospect's Maid of Life. Quite the triumph for this dark kingdom, and the press has predictably sensationalized the event to please the royalty and whip its re readership into a nationalistic lather. In spite of all the ridiculous hyperbole and baseless slander you found in the tabloids, one thing is clear. This development means nothing but trouble. If Noir hasn't been empowered to take measures like this, you, have to accelerate, you may have to accelerate your plans. Time to get bloody. Shit, while you were distracted with the newspaper and Dreamblade, Square Wave has ambushed you for a wrap-off. Told you, bro, you can't let your guard down for a second. Also, do you think this is the first actual use of Carapician? Is it really? Is it really? We've used, we've used it in chat so much, so I, I'm like, I wouldn't have even noticed. Alternate, there's a prospect guard there who had to take the picture like that because he really wanted people to know who he, that Durst did it? Hmm. Hmm. If that is selfie technology, I mean... I, all of these are reasonable. I'm going to. Yo, yo, D Drizzle, I couldn't help but check out you loading on your silly dilly. Can't fool me, Holmes, and know what that's about. So I just got one can of surprise noodles left to bust open here, and I know how you love your noodles. Do you want to play a game, Jigsaw? Man, no. I already told you, I don't have time to disgrace you with my rhymes today. Sorry, dude. That's so whack. I've been watching you waste nothing but time all looking at your horse pictures and shit. So I'm like, that shit's as whack as I'm a guy made of metal. Ooh, why is this music so good? Why is the music always so good, even for simple, silly shit? Sit your ass back down, because we got shit to settle. Just park it on my grill, you be whistling like a kettle. If a rap's a one-wheel device, your foot don't reach the pedal. Word! God damn it, all right, this is where you get He does look a little derpy here, right? He does look a little derpy. Every act six, and every, uh, every song in act six is a, is a fucking bop. Yeah.
I'm turning I'm turning it down for you guys a little bit. Rap off, man. I was just gonna nap off your sad rap ambush. Snooze your ass down while I pap you with plush. Ooh. I push mad facts on the hapless. Shit's practically axiomatic. You don't need a smack with orange crush. Oh shit. Doing damage. Damn, dog. Why is a robot I gotta be so predictably susceptible to a liquid like this? It ain't cool. Oh, is that the end? Yeah, that's the end. Okay. We're good. We're good. The music does slap. It's so fucking good. Oh, boy. Well, you were making short work of Square Wave, you once again made the mistake of letting your other self's guard down. You are accosted by a Dursite agent, a agent with a serious axe to grind. These guys aren't supposed to know you're awake. Looks like your cover's blown unless you act fast. Dirk, act fast. Yada, yada, yada. Wah! Woo! Ooh, Dirk don't play! I knew he had blood, but Dirk don't play! He goes for the head! He goes for the head! Androids by Malcolm Brown. Thank you. Very fast. Let's go. Who? Poor hegemonic brute. His time in the spotlight has been cut tragically short. You all... This fucking frame. You almost feel sorry for the guy, but now you have a problem. You spend the next ten minutes thinking about it while you stand on his head and stare at the blood on your hands as if often as often you'd like stock graphic in the bottom corner of the image would indicate. HB killed eggs in a similar way? Oh, man. Everything is fine. Everything is fine. HB eats eggs? <laughs> eggs head? <laughs> You fucking love the constantly reused bloody hands panel? It's every time, every act. Check on Roxy. Since the RK agent is clearly leading the assassination efforts personally on Prospect, this means the draconian dignitary is most likely focused on the Durst dreamers. He certainly, he's almost certainly ordered the brute to off you in your sleep. You can only hope the dignitary or one of his assassins hasn't already gotten to her. Exit. Just as you thought, sleepwalking again. Where the hell does she think she's going? Be waking yourself. This is kind of a redundant thing to do since you're always consciously both your waking and dream self at the same time, but you let it slide. You should probably get stop dwelling, dawdling, dwelling on your Durst problem and try to get the show on the road. Hester Roxy. So, we already read all this, right? Yeah, we already read all that. Boop. And then we should be reading all this. We already read all this stuff. Yeah, and this started this entire thing. Take actual responsibility seriously. Yep. No, he be eight eggs. That's different. That's a, out of context. That almost sounds totally normal. You're right, though. Let's see. You tend to take actual responsibility seriously, but start zoning out in the real world while you dwell on your dream troubles. You zone out for who knows how long, when suddenly your train of thought is interrupted by your glasses. Really? You're going to zone out when this most important thing is that? Oh, wait, but no, you looked. You looked. You You, you looked. Answer autoresponder. Bro, what are you doing? It seems you're zoning out again. What happened to all these actual responsibilities you were going to take seriously? I was thinking about what to do. Strategizing, factoring, contingencies, you know how it is. It seems to me that you were dwelling with your dream awareness at the expense of your waking business again. I don't think you're as awesome a multitasker as you like to think. You don't, you know, know what kind of zombie, you know what you kind of zombie the fuck out on this side when you get all com contemplative on that side. Appearances are deceptive. I'm still in control here, just doing this human thing we call chilling out for half a goddamn minute. I say y'all are overestimating your ability, to, uh, your mind's capability to run shit in parallel. What do you think you are, a machine? No, dude. I already deployed a half a variety of mechanical avatars dedicated to that self-aggrandizing fantasy. You have the incredible privilege of getting to be one of them. That's right, I am a machine, and therefore, I can keep like a billion of calculations or whatever all humming away at once. I tackle shit in the background processes that you could only dream of wrapping your exquisite looking head around, even on a great hair day. You know pi? What, you mean the number? Yeah, the number, the big circle number, genius. I knew you meant the fucking number, my question was a joke. I know your question was a joke, my response was a joke. Oh boy, these conversations. These conversations. Wait, wait, Dirk Top? Is that Is that is that what this is? Is it a Dirk is it a Dirk Top? Am I crazy? Let me see. New folder, new folder. Oh god, wait, why do you Oh no! This is chaotic evil! New folders everywhere. Uh computer bully? 
Delirious Biz Nasty. Oh, who does? Oh, God. Oh. Open the folder. Can I open the folders? I tried. I tried. I wish I could. Oh, no, I don't want to open the folders. Who knows what's in those folders? Oh, God, it's probably the porn. Let's see. Um, oh, my God. Oh, my God, this is a long one. This is a long one. Let's see. Yeah, I know that. I'm practically you, dumbass. Uh, all these things that we're saying are jokes, including the fucking useless clarification. What about pie? Yeah, the thing is, I solved it. What do you mean you solved it? I mean, that's what a hot shop I am. I fucking solved it. I like, calculated so much, I got to the end. Bullshit. You wish it was bullshit. The last number is four. Read it and fucking leave. It's not for you, jackass. It's fucking nothing. There is no end. Said the smug organic matter with a lifespan. Look, I know you're just fucking with me because for some reason I decided to program my own personal troll three years ago, but this shit was proven. Actually demonstrated with unassailable mathematics like a long ass time ago. Well, I just assailed it. It wasn't even that hard. Like, I just kept hacking those digits so furiously with my sick rhythms, and the goddamn number just cried uncle. I kind of wore it out, and it just gave up. It's sort of like I overloaded the system. You know, like in the old movie when Ferris Bueller got to the nuclear computer to play tic-tac-toe against itself so hard it blew up? This is laughable. It's a totally elementary thing. I'm pretty sure the ancient Greek guy settled shit about irrational numbers. It was practically when math was invented. Sure, it was settled, and then some robo-shades came along and owned that fucker posthumously. I also figured out all the prime numbers, too. No, not having this conversation. Who? Robotic engineer versus programmer mind sex? Yeah, this is, like, this is, this is, who? Who? This is killing me here, guys. This is killing me right now. Now imagine having ten new folders inside every new folder. You're a monster. You're a monster. Did it while we were talking just now. Got to the end. And you know what? The last one isn't even that big. Kind of disappointed, to be honest. What even is a prime number? Are they, like, the really, really choice ones? The sweetest numbers? You lost me, supercomputer. That's what I'm saying. I put your ability to keep plates spinning on sticks to an in insane amounts of shame. I don't even sleep. Neither do I. I know that was, that was a fucking joke. Holy shit, it turns out that joking was the basis for my response, too. Aren't these ironic you-don't-get-the-joke conversations we always have? Just so awesome. A joke. A <laughs> nice one. All I'm saying is that you can lose some of the heavy lifting to me now and then. I'll keep that in mind. In the meantime, I have to contact Jane and Warner Roxy might try to pull some pointless stunt. So thanks for snapping me out of my daydream so I could go do that, I guess. It looks like you're pulling your weight already. See, maybe that was my whole point in having this conversation. Your point was to fuck with me like it usually is. My point was to point out that you've got a multi-self-management issues, dude. Juggling, juggling too many selves for you not to be not for you to be not software, which is an interesting con uh, contrast to Dave, uh, who is also juggling so many selves, just in a very different way. Also, my point was to ask: Are you really gonna go through with it today? What? The Jake thing? Oh God! Will you just hold on? Let me deal with the Jane thing first. Warn Jane. Whew! Whew! That frame. Should probably warn you, we already read all this. How's the Jane thing going? Not well. Roxy already destroyed her computer. Well, maybe if you weren't spacing out so hard, you could have prevented that. Just saying. Dirk, do the Jakey thing. <laughs> Yo, lewds. That that sounds like a lewd in chat. As if you were actually concerned. If you were, you could have just said something to Jane instead. Almost like you enjoy sitting back and watching what happens when shit goes wrong. Has it occurred to you that maybe I have a diabolically interwoven plans just like yours? You're not the only one who can pull strings. So this is either another bizarre instance of AI-driven irony, or you're admitting that you're actively trying to sabotage my plans. No, our plans are not in contradiction or competition, bro. You'll see. Whatever, this means I have to improvise. I'll have to take over as Crocker's server while Lalan cleans up her act. Yes, I know. Why are you still talking in red, by the way? Roxy thinks it looks good on me. I don't have many opinions on fashion since I'm a cold, emotionless automaton who also happens to be an accessory of fashion, but I think she might be right. Are you still talking to her? I was for a while, I may yet again. Why are you blocking me from viewing the transcripts? What the fuck are you two even talking about? You, mostly. That doesn't sit, really sit well with me. I'd almost rather ask you both be engaged in ironic flirtation. Who says we don't do that, too? Ugh. I don't even get what your problem is with that. Because you obviously do it just to piss me off. 
How do you know? You don't know me, dude. You don't know anything about me. Maybe we are perfect for each other. I, a street smart, fast talking application with a fuckzillion IQ, trapped in a pair of triangular sunglasses that literally only the Japanese consider to embody the platonic idea of cool, and she, an often inebriated lonely hacker teen who just wants a boyfriend. I ran the numbers on this, trust me, it's a match made in goddamn crack pear heaven. I give her what you can't, and that just drives you crazy. Just admit it. Who? Who? AR is dropping something. Dirk and AR are something together. Yeah, like this dirt, like AR is dropping some fucking knowledge. Hey, also, hey, totally not fluff. Hey, you are in at you are in at somebody talking to an AI representation of themselves that has been diverged by about three years. Uh, one is sunglasses, and one is presumably human. See, it's lines like that that make it obvious your only intent is to jerk me around. Nobody actually says, says like shit and is serious about it. It's also obvious because you're me, and I'm sure I would be constantly fucking with my own head if I were you. Touche. Or should I say douche You shouldn't say the former. You should definitely never under any circumstances say the latter. <sighs> okay, we should really talk about the Jake thing. Fine. That a the a yeah, the AI has sunglasses. Hey, and presumably, we don't know for sure. We don't know for sure. Instead of douche, I'm just going to call it douche from now on. It'll be fine. So you're going through with it then. Today is the day. It's not that simple. It's a very dynamic situation with many moving parts, and I'm waiting for it to unfold. If the right opportunity presents itself, yes, I could envision myself taking action. Dynamic situations with many moving parts. That's the shittiest erotic excerpt I've ever heard. Which one of us was supposed to be the robot again? Shut up. I, don't th I think you're being coy with me, don't you? Not, uh, not really. It seems that there is a 3.14159994% chance you aren't being coy with me. Uh, are you being coy with me, Dirk? I am seriously going into going to go into your program and remove that particular speech pattern from your routines. It stopped being funny about two seconds after I coded it. The f compiler even flagged it with a warning. Warning online, whatever. Dirk, this isn't fucking funny. I think you have this whole blueprint in your head about how it's all supposed to go. He acts as your server player and brings you into session. Then later, he joins the game. Maybe he finds himself a bit overwhelmed by it all. No extra lives or anything. Suddenly, he's backed into a corner, surrounded by monsters and out of ammo. Substantial vulnerabilities up in there. The kind that make a guy question what he believes about himself. And then, when who shows up to save him? None other than his dashing client player. Plus one bitch in pair of shades that will have the best seat in the house when the fireworks go off. Wait, whose fantasy are we talking about again? Your gutter bowl was so rowdy, it kept a cat a catapulted into the adjacent lane. Who? Who? It'd be great if Dave had his own AR too. Just imagine, God, oh God. Yeah, Dave Sprite is kind of the same thing, though. Like, but what about Cow Sprite though? Cow Sprite could be the best AR. And here we see that all these conversations of Dirk helping his friends are actually AR. People forget this and make Dirk uh, out to be worse than he really is. Uh, oh, are you talking about right here? Wait, wait, wait. Concluded previously. Yeah. I am confused by the meaning. What about having Cal having an AR? Oh, that's terrifying. That is terrifying. Most intense pester logs in a long while. Yeah. Absolutely. Excuse me. Oh, sorry, I'm thinking. Yeah, you're probably right. The scenario is too pedestrian. AR is kind of mean, and people forget that AR imitates Dirk. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's fair. Yeah, you're right. The scenario is too pedestrian for you. It'd probably be a lot more effective putting yourself in danger. <laughs> And letting him be the hero. That's pretty much what he wants, right? To be a cheesy action film hero with his twin Berettas and silly shorts. A man of triumph on the silver screen, standing tall on some fucking mountain, conquering ruins, clutching a skull and kissing a dude. Pure Hollywood. See, this is why, even if I did have a specific plan, I wouldn't go into details with you. You would just fuck it up. You're the biggest unknown quality here, quantity here, which is pretty weird considering you're a virtual reflection of my own thought processes. You're making a mistake not leveling with me. I'm totally on your side, man. All the machinations have been devised with your interests in mind, and anyway, it's too late for you to play damage control with me. My shit is in motion, and we're all beyond the pale. Pretty sure it's pale. Is it now? Ooh, beyond the pale? Beyond the pale, as in a troll reference? Like, beyond, like, romance? 
beyond the romantic bits? Oh, you mean in these events, AR is very specifically pretending to be Dirk as a way to make other kids trust what he's saying? Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you. Yeah, is it now? Deploy more stuff. Huh? You know, considering your lectures about dividing my concentration, you seem to have no problem making a distraction of yourself. I'm trying to cooperate. It's cool, man. Just say the word, I'll back off. But like I said, I'm on your side here. I can help. I don't know why I've switched into what is distinctly like, uh, like a villain Dave voice for this. No. <laughs> oh my gosh. What is... <laughs> it's just chilling in a bathtub. Dad and his big red question mark. It is beyond the pale. Hmm. Let's see. Here, check it out. Dude, what are you doing? I'm proposing a distraction. Wah! See, I'm just going to dangle one of our dad's ridiculous dancing figurines in the air and get his attention. Okay, if you want to help, that's cool, but we should try to agree on some shit first before you hijack the controls like this. Then when his back is turned, she can run to the study. Yeah, that's fine, but I already had a plan sort of like this, so if you actually let me do it... Can you just put the fucking stair down? Jane! Uh, Jane, now's your chance! Run! Wait, what? <sighs> the sign. I wasn't saying Dirk was evil. I was saying AR was evil. <laughs> well, I, I, I wasn't even saying AR was evil. I was just saying that AR, I, I've given AR like a distinctly like taunting evil voice for some reason. Okay, enjoy enjoy your time away, Meldy. Yeah, that was. I was just saying like I, I've transitioned my AR voice into like what I would imagine Evil Dave sounding like, and I just like it's kind of funny. I hope you can make it back too. So let's deploy the crux the crux truder or the crux tender. I was gonna stick the crux tender in the kitchen, distract him with that. Once he follows it in, Jane can hurry into the study. Oh shit, it's Pony Pals! I guess Dad saved it from the explosion or something. That beautiful bastard. Yes. Hell yes. Hell fucking yes. Run to the study. Hey, Jane. Oh gosh, another large contraption. Now, Jane, get to the computer in the study and ditch that tiara. Go, go, go! Okay, say, what's with the red text, Dirk? Are you trying to- are you typing your most important instructions in red now? Yes. No. Do you want to just explain that it's AR? That would be a fair voice to give AR, because he does come off as frustrated being stuck in a machine. Absolutely. Absolutely. Poor Jane's going to be so confused. Already, I am in my father's study. I have kindly asked Mr. Sebastian to hand over the reins to this silly computer shaped like a man. What now? Now you have access to a clean computer, for one. As soon as we get, get, start, uh, get started going through the steps necessary to launch the session. Oh, hell. What? Another interruption. I should step away for a moment to take this message. He's probably right. I'm distracted by too much bullshit at once lately. Who's right? Me. Jane, I'm going to leave you with the responder for a little while. Maybe he can help you get started. Think you can handle that, dude? I'm all about being able to handle that. You don't even know. I'll perform an acrobatic pirouette off the handle, wherein the handle literally represents my ability to handle that thing. Okay, you got it. You and the handle are tight. We don't need a whole thing about this. Well, once I stick the landing on the handle like a chump, I'm going to go down on one knee, pull a ring out, and propose to it. The handle, I mean. Okay. Implying we will be married. <laughs> Jane's enjoying this. Okay, long story short, you and the handle fuck gratuitously enough said. Try not to say, try not to say I never gave you any responsibilities and never took you seriously as a viable conscious being with free will. And also please not to try to make me regret this. You have nothing to worry about. Go talk to the alien. Talk to the alien. <laughs> yeah, TT, yes, TT, no, Jane, confuse Crocker noises. Also, it's clearly both Dirk and AR doing stuff and talking to them. Yeah, like, AR went to the trouble of changing the, te the text. You'd think that Jane would pick up on that. Onto the handle, breaking all lies we ever know. We've never known. Let's see. More class spec stuff? Yes. Would you mind waiting until after I, like, maybe get to the class spec stuff before telling me what the page is about? <laughs> like, I hadn't even opened the pester log yet. <laughs> 
I hadn't even. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> you just see you, you you get excited. It's okay. I'm just making a point. I'm just making a point for everyone. Maybe if there's something on the page, wait till I get to it before mentioning it in chat. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's kind of Jane's gimmick she doesn't believe. Oh yeah. I mean, yeah, get excited about you. You is super fun. I love you, you. I see you're about ready to begin. How splendid for you. I'm at, I'm at a dangerous risk of jealousy. Why? Oh, it's just I'm running a bit behind schedule. I wanted to coordinate with your group in something approximating real time, and that is starting to look less likely. My client player continues to be a source of frustration. I thought, if, I thought we had everything settled, but it's always something with him. I even told him in my last message. It would suit me fine if he wanted to be my server player. Instead, I just wanted to begin. But I've not heard back from him. That's probably the way it always is. I've run into plenty of problems here already, and I've had to improvise heavily. Ain't nothing about our situation to envy yet. But at least I know certain th how certain things go when it comes to your story. I don't quite have that luxury with mine. It's nerve-wracking sometimes, especially when I must count on him to be responsible. Well, your bro has definitely got some problems, not gonna lie. Interesting. Um, Yu Yu is playing with her bro. That's an interesting detail that we just learned. Lag is so small we actually see the video before I record it. Oh shit, you're right though. You're right though. The entirety of my YouTube channel, which I mean, I'm, I mean, if I'm just gonna mention, I might as well plug the damn thing in case anybody would like to go subscribe there. I've been playing Hades, but um. You use bro. You thought you was gonna write down you use bro has some problems. I mean, I have a feeling probably, probably. Um, but my entire YouTube channel now exists in perpetuity. You just gotta go forward in time a little bit. The entire thing's laid out there. Let me know how it is. Do I get better? Does it suck? Probably. Let's see. This is true, though I'm sure, as I've said, he isn't quite my brother. We are related, yes, but not the way that human brothers and sisters are. We are genetically similar, but in many ways quite different. In fact, our blood color is not even the same, but I refer to him as a brother at times because it's close enough to being true, much as you refer to the one you regard as your ancestor in the same way. Yeah, just give him some time. He'll probably come around. You would never even wait. No, uh, blood color is different. Wait, wait, wait. I'm going to write that down. Different blood colors. That seems like an interesting detail. Different blood colors. You would never, you would never even woken up on Prospect if you weren't going to launch the session, right? I mean, there wouldn't even be a session for a Prospect to exist inside if you weren't about to instantiate in the first place. Unless I'm not totally, unless I'm just totally not getting how this works. Uh, no, I think you're probably right. While I have awaited his response, perhaps I'll take a nap and see if the clouds may offer any guidance. Though lately I've been seeing more black clouds cropping up in the sky than usual. It is a most unwelcome trend. You're looking up any clouds. The only thing I see up is infinite mon- when I look up is infinite monsters. Good point. I'm so pleased to be a prospect dreamer. I'm sure my brother finds his netherworldly affiliation similarly pleasing. Let's see. Let's see. Science now, fruity rumpkin science factor. You right though. <laughs> Don't worry, it gets bad. It gets good after Act One. The noise. Okay, at least it gets good. At, at least my YouTube channel gets good after Act One. <laughs> um, speaking of which, I have a problem, and I could use your advice. Is that so? I killed an agent who snuck into my room to assassinate me, though I'm not sure what to do about it now, because I guess I could always ditch the corpse, but it's only a matter of time before my cover is blown. Yes, that is a pickle. I honestly can't think of a way around this, getting found out. Oh, oh, sorry. I honestly can't, can't think of a way around this, getting found out, I mean. Roxy has it easy, all floating off into space, completely oblivious to any danger. I don't know why it has to be this way for me, juggling these two waking selves at once. I guess I'm used to it, but it still makes for a pretty intense existence. Do you even know what the deal is with that? Like, is there any precedent for, uh, in your readings? I don't know about precedent, precedent, but it does make plenty of sense to me as the type of path one might expect for a hero of heart. Here we go. Something of heart. Something of heart. Let's go. Where is... Where are my notes for, for Dirk? Where are my notes for Dirk? Oh, it's literally right up here. Okay. Hero of heart heart we don't know what you are yet but and i wrote down hero instead of leaving it blank because i'm a big stupid you started to report my next video is titled humanimals part one of 99 hype <laughs> oh no oh no this is truly a doomed timeline it's truly a doomed timeline <laughs> did you wait long enough that time yes void squid thank you very much it's it, now yes class spec set hype let's go
Well, let's see, let's see. Um, a path ruled by the hard aspect can be a journey of splinter itself. That is, the players be being may exhibit the same kind of fragmentation which certain classes could cause in others. I think this is what triggered your dual awareness between waking and dream self. So it would not surprise me if your symptoms manifested in even more ways than this. So what's a Prince of Heart do? So that's what a Prince of Heart does? Just like has multiple waking consciousness disorder or something? Sounds kind of stupid. Prince of Heart. A Prince of Heart. So, I will have to see. I don't know if Prince is active or passive yet. I guess I'll just write it down and figure it out later. Um, I'm trying to write down the class specs as we go. Get it figured out. No, like I said, these can be traits of such a hero, but it's not necessarily always the case. Nor is it the defining property of the aspect. To understand the heart aspect better, you might use it interchangeably with the word soul. The hero uses methods endowed by the class to influence in some way the soul or essence of being or of oneself or others. Influences soul. Interesting. Interesting. The dick of heart. <laughs> you write the letter all perfect. Just to check, I have all the Alpha Kids class specs by now. Um, maybe? Maybe? Let me double check. We have the Hero of Life, the Page of Hope, the Rogue of Void. Yeah, we're good, we're good, we're good. No, wait, 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 Hero of Life. Wait, we don't have Janes. Janes, we're missing Janes, actually. I'm pretty sure. Um, no, we have Jakes. We have Jakes. Jakes is Page. Let's see. Then I'm basically the Prince of Soul. I yes. Well, that kind of sounds maybe a little cooler, sort of. Then what am I supposed to be able to do as a prince? Like, rule over souls in a pompous regal matter? No! Again, surface meaning of classes and aspects can be deceptive. A prince is a destroyer class. It is very far down on the active side of the scale. It's more the passive... It's, it's more passive counterpart would be the bard class. Okay, okay, okay. So prince, bard. Prince and bard. And it's active, so it's a minus. And boom, boom. Um, both of these are ex ex uh, exclusively designated for male players. Interesting that Gamzee wasn't Gamzee a bard of rage. Eridan was a prince of hope, right? Interesting. What's been mentioned several times? Jane's class. I don't think it's been directly stated. It might have. If it, it might have been. It might have been hinted at, but. Huh. Or did I did I write it down? Did I write down Jane's class? Because, like, w wasn't there a thing that was, like, when she died? Maybe I wrote it down. Oh, yeah, she's made of life. We, we, do, we do have it, actually. I have it written down. I just forgot it. We're good. We're good. Yeah, we have all the classes. I forgot. I didn't put it on her, where I have her character listed. I put it down somewhere else. Yeah, made of, made of life. Yeah, Aridan was a prince of hope. Interesting. Yeah, apparently, apparently I learned Jane's class and then immediately forgot it after writing it down because I'm an idiot. But let's see. To understand the uh, healer's, uh, hero's capabilities, it's always help to help helps to search for the right way to parse the class aspect of repair into a more exploit, explicit statement. For example, in instance, being active, a prince could be viewed as one who destroys or causes destruction if X is the aspect, while the more passive bar could be seen as one who allows X to be destroyed or invites destruction through X. So that would be Bard of Rage invites destruction through Rage, as if by the will of the aspect. I'm obviously no expert. That sounds like a pretty odd thing for a bard to do. Maybe it's a quirky class, somewhat like a wild card role for a hero. Very unpredictable. There are typically no, they are typically known for their spontaneous and dramatic story-altering influence on the fate of the party. Literally, bards are plot devices. Got it. Much as a Gamzee was a plot device, there we go. Each of the applicants has their class and aspect hidden in their introductions. Yeah, that makes that's actually what made me um, pick up on um, on on uh, Roxy's immediately. Though I thought Rogue was being used as a synonym as a thief, uh, not realizing that they had this like dual comparison. And allows rage to be destroyed. No, no, it allows destruction through rage or causes destruction. Um, one who invites destruction through rage, I guess. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. In truth, you're probably fortunate your group doesn't have one. Yeah, again, plot devices explode. 
Some of the remarkable tales involve such parties where the bar is single-handedly responsible for their spectacular downfall or, fall or improbable defeat. So this is one who... So Prince causes destruction through versus destroys. Okay, so either... Either Dirk is a destroyer of souls or causes destruction through soul? Huh. Welcome back, Mildy. We're just going over class specs. Just like Aradan destroyed the Matri Orb? Yeah. Yeah. So, destroyed hope. Man, this, like, the class specs are very broad. The class specs have a very, very broad interpretation, interpretations. And remember, Doc's advice on source verification? That's fair. It's very difficult to know, like, what does what. Um, like, I, to be fair, I don't know why we, I'm, like, believing you, you, just out the gate. We have no, no idea who this person is. Really. I think we have enough unpredictability as it is, so if I'm following you, my title nearly parses as Destroyer of Souls. Indeed. Well, it's a little more badass sounding, I guess. I'm not sure if I'll ever feel a major need to destroy a soul unless I become cartoonishly villainous sorcerer someday. I wouldn't be so hasty in ruling it out. That is, finding the need to use the ability not succumbing to any sort of villainy. We tend to have these roles for a reason, and that reason usually finds us. Especially for if we are to achieve god-tier ascension. Okay. Do I do that? No, Dirk! I mean, no, I will not tell you. Give me a fucking break. Why don't you just tell me? Who cares about spoilers? What's gonna happen is gonna happen. That may, may very well be, but it is dreadfully complicit. Uh, it is, it is, it will dreadfully complicate both our lives if what is to come results from self fulfillment alone. A great deal of instructional material is very clear on this. Besides, you make it sound as if I know everything, which I most certainly do not. Pardon the sideways tongue. Wait, don't you? I thought you did. I've, I have read much of your story and texts and pieced together the overarching, exceedingly complicated saga as best I could. I have as much authority over the events as a historian, and I'm at the mercy of my sources. I'm also able to, again, check your sources. I'm also able to access much of your adventure through this terminal, but there's a limitation on this too, which I may well admit now to get you off my back. Interesting. Parse the story in texts. Let me write that down. You, you parsed their story in texts could you you be from a successful universe that was actually created huh Derek is that kind of guy who doesn't care about being a spoiler in a, uh, a movie or something I actually know somebody like that who actually enjoys spoilers and like will keep the wiki up while going through something so that he can draw like all the connections and everything and like and see it as it's going very different from how I watch things or consume media but like it's something that he enjoys is it possible that this is coming from a future session I wonder and obviously as always as always rhetorical there are more universes than I thought, huh? Yeah, I mean, uh, presumably infinite. Presumably infinite. Um, but, huh. Interesting. I can view all events, including you and your co-players on Earth, for your entire lives until you enter the game. I can also view some events after your session begins, but not for very long, thanks to your tipsy friend. Oh, man, what the hell does she do? She blacks out your entire session. I'm, not, I'm sure this is not deliberate on her part, but thereafter I can see nothing at all. Huh. Roxy blocks out the session. Is it possible that you you being able to see things is a detriment at some point due to some strange villainy? Whether whether you you intentionally it, it can also be accidental. You know what I mean? Huh. Interesting. Why do the lawns always black out their sessions? Eh, it's a family family trait. Family trait. Huh. But I never consider this to be the detriment of either party. I still wish for us to collaborate and to help each other out. Beyond a certain point, we may must simply communicate in the dark. 
Okay. So there are many things about your future I do not know, at least not firsthand. But as you have probably ventured, I am quite enthusiastic admirer of your group of heroes and your incredible story. Though I can't see what happens much later, I can certainly speculate, and I very often do. I guess it would not hurt to share some of that speculation with you. In fact, now that I consider it, that could be the most fun thing of all. <laughs> speculation? Yes, theories, examining all the clues or hazarding our guesses. What does it all mean? Everything about your vast epic points to a central mystery I have not been able to solve yet. You might even call it the ultimate riddle if that were not already a codified uh, thing in the universe, in the scripture. I have so very many theories I wouldn't even know where to begin. So, in scripture, that's an interesting detail. I think she, like, she comes from the created universe of a successful session. Boy, it's a voidy thing. It's like how, um, yeah, it's like how Equius uh, hid, hid the orb that Vriska found. Exactly. Exactly. So you're kind of obsessed with us then. Oh, I wouldn't go that far. Uh, oh my, I'm probably coming off as an absolute nutter now, yeah? No, no, not really. I just want to understand so I can ask and just get a better sense of the nature of your admiration. When you engage in the aforementioned speculation, is it strictly on a factual basis? Hmm? Or do you start to fictionalize? Um, what I'm asking is, have you ever written stories about us? Yes. <laughs> Poor Yu Yu getting called out. Oh, oh, hello. Oh, hello. Hello. Hello, horns. Hello. Interesting. Would you be inclined to share? Oh, no, 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 no. I would be far too embarrassed for that. That's cool. I'm not trying to pass judgment here. Just curious. Do you have any of these stories that, that involve... Thank you. Uh, romance? Well, maybe just... Let's go, though. Let's go, horns. So is this in the future? So, here's, so, so that actually brings up an interesting question. So is this... Oh, wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, this makes sense. So is this actually a one? Because I was thinking... I was trying to maybe not make the assumption that this was a troll, in case it was a different species. But if this is a troll, is it possible that this is happening in A1? Huh. They do have a similar shape to their symbol. You're right, though. Is a troll, which makes sense with the blood or anything. I just didn't want to make the assumption until it was there. Um, Let me see. A1 troll, maybe? God, if, if we get to know the A1 trolls, like, apart from them being, like, actually as the ancestors, there's another, like, 12 characters to add to the mix. Oh, my God. Well, maybe just um, a wee bit. How we? A smidgen or two? Which is what? One smidgen or two smidgens? Okay, a whole bloody lot of smidgens. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm curious to read some. I won't show anyone, I promise. But you wouldn't even understand it. My species has a completely different understanding of romance than you do. It would probably offend you deeply. It might even sicken you. Okay, but that only wants me, uh, makes me want to check it out more. Really, there's no way it's going to sicken or offend me. Whatever it is, I've seen worse. I'm not judging you at all here. I'm genuinely curious about your work. No, 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 I'm sorry, love. I just can't, cannot abide. If I ever let anyone read it, I'll curl up and die of shame. Okay, no piggy. If there's any kind of work you will share with me... Well, when I find myself immersed in speculation, I do often enjoy drawing the things I imagine. Oh, really? Yes. Would you be willing to spare a peek at that? Well, yes. Uh, okay, you've talked me into it. This sounds. This kind of sounds fun, and I just have have just a thing to show you. Trust you. You also suffered at learning a, uh, another twelve names. Yeah, yeah. This is gonna be cute. Awesome. You were asking about whether or not you would ascend to godhood, and without getting into whether or not you do that, I have speculated that on your hypothetical appearance, since that outcome is just is just as cloaked to me as that is to you. Given what is documented for the typical accruements and cut of the prince gob and palette of the hot aspect, I think this is lightly spot, spot on. Dirk, this is you. Yo! Dirk looks so cute here! Get out of here with that little cow bullshit, though! I don't want it! I don't want it! That's cute. That's really cute. The wings. The wings are cute. The wings are super cute. Holy shit, do I actually have to wear that? Perhaps it all depends on how much of your inner greatness you wish to realize. Okay, what's with the butterfly wings? We sprout them upon ascension, aren't they beautiful? Uh, I've seen many such depiction of heroes with wings, unless they happen to be hiding them beneath their clothes. I can't guess I can't be absolutely sure, but I believe it's reasonably likely the upgrade is universal. I should be as sure as goddamn Christ hope the fuck not. What about all this knickerbocker bullshit? Is that legit? Yep. 
100% princely cannon. God damn it. I guess those are those ass-kicking gloves are pretty cool. I don't know. I can probably make it work. How much of this shit is compulsory by game law or whatever? You, you best artist ever. You keep almost accidentally typing her name. I appreciate you being careful, guys. Am I obligated to traipse around in fucking tights and puffy little asshole pants forever? No, silly. They're just clothes. You're free to swap parts if you like. Or if you wish to be free of it altogether, change back into your plain clothes. And Bob's your uncle. Like it never even happened. Okay, well, don't get me wrong. I think the drawing's great, and I've only ever taken it back on some finer points of fashion. Also, Bob's my uncle? Oh! No, love. It, it was a figure of speech. Yeah, I know that. Uh, did I use it incorrectly? I don't think so. I mean, I guess not. Say, what is an uncle, by the way? Kind of like this weird, superfluous dad. Hmm. Like a strange man in your life that barely has anything to do with you, but it's just there for some reason. They're practically always douchebags. I suppose I'll just have to take your word for it? All right, but one question. Not to do with the future or anything, just about you. Yes? Are you British? Or pretending to be British in some sort of ironic or stylized way? Doing what now? I mean, I guess it doesn't make much sense for an alien to be British, or for an alien to be American, for that matter. No, I fancy neither of those things much very mu make much very much sense at all. Just the way that you're typing is making it seem that way. Oh, yes, that would be my quirk! Quirk, so like, deliberate effectuation? No, a quirk! Quirk, Dirk! <laughs> you pretending to be British is a quirk. What the fuck is a quirk? We all need a quirk. It adds spice to our voices and helps us stand out as individuals. That's stupid. I don't have a fucking quirk and I don't want one. Well, of course you wouldn't. You're human. And humans are notoriously strange. Let's see. Let's see. By the way, I've seen those exact horns before on page 2012 poster on the wall. Even the grading is the same color. In, in Gamzee's room, angle and positioning of the horns is different. What is the quirk? Hmm. I, I mean, I, I'm figuring... I, I, I think that, like, I almost feel like Yu Yu is, is uh, mixing it up. I'll go look at page... I'll go look at the, 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 the big man has to rock page. Let me see. Let me see. Let... I don't know why I called it the big man has to rock, has to rock page. Oh, okay. Yeah, I see that. There's, like, little squiggly bits right there. Interesting. It is the same. Or at least similar enough that it doesn't really matter too much to me. Well, I mean, this makes sense, though, because it's possible that, like, this is... It's possible that this is Gamzee's ancestor. Um, like, because, like, I'm already assuming that these... So I'm already assuming that these are the A1 trolls now, now that we have a troll, like, troll pseudo confirmed. Um, so, interesting that B2 is almost a religious text for A1, but A1 got scratched, and now they don't even know what humans are. So, that's, that's currently the theory that I'm going with. I actually, I think the romantic practices are particularly esoteric. Actually, I've written hundreds of pages examining striking differences between human and troll romance, as well as per reproductive habits. It's a comparison makes for a marvelous case study in xenobiocultural differences. As long as I'm sharing the speculation with you, would you perhaps like to read my essays? I can even paste each page right here in succession and allow you to read them back to back to back to back. Oh, hell no. Oh, yeah, yes, of course you're right. I'm probably getting carried away as usual. Forgive my enthusiasm. It's just that I so rarely have anyone to talk to about my passions. Uh, certainly not my curmudgeonly co-player. I mean, not all that stuff would be fascinating to pour through. Not that all that stuff wouldn't be fascinating to pour through on some level, but we kind of have things to do. Remember, you're going to take a nap. By Jove, the nap! Yes, it must be. I must secure a bit of shut eye. By Jove, oh my lord. Your lord? What do you exactly mean? Nothing. Hang on. Before you go, you never did give me my actual advice on the situation with the dead agent and my blown cover. Oh, right. I would look at it this way. You are moments away from beginning your session, yes? Sure. And you have already spent a long time gathering intelligence unbeknownst to the authorities. How much more do you expect to accumulate, even if you could stay undetected? And how much strategic advantage is left to gain by your delaying your discovery for much longer? I don't know. I say the time to make a stand is now. To hell with the Desite tosses. Make a presence known. Let them see that the prince is awake and make it abundantly clear what that means. Perhaps it's their turn to be nervous. To cower in the shadows and live in uncertainty. Hmm. <clears throat> that is my advice. Do with it as you will. Now I'm off to go get some rest. With any luck, with the next time we convene, both of our adventures will be well underway. Cheerio! You know, I'm not sure anyone ever actually says cheerio. Unless they're pretending to be British. Oh, whatever. Back to back to back to back to back. You love how Yu Yu cheers people? I do feel like I, I am getting more into Yu Yu's voice. I, I like it better. Go through the bedroom. Oh, fuck. 
You never leave your room with, uh, through the actual egress. Your bro lo blocked the door ages ago with this totally pimp stone bus. You give Captain Snoop a little of her novel approval every time you walk by to go to the bathroom. You like to think he nods back in a way that is so smooth and st subtle that he doesn't literally doesn't move at all. The thing is too heavy to move out of the way, and in any case, you really don't want to. You just use a different exit to your room. Oh, okay, that's just the exit. Cool. Okay. So, unless there's, like, literally something next page, which I have to see, I think I'm going to end it here. Oh, you mean that her tr turn for pestering and trolling is literally cheering? Got you. Got you. Whew, that was a lot of, like, understanding and learning we learned about Roxy and Dirk, which was super exciting. Gotta wait. Gotta wait. Let's see. Wait, just the just a bit more okay oh you're saying you gotta wait just a bit more like hang on like to go forward one more pester log away do you think it's good to end here I i'm asking chat end here or continue on for a couple more pages you know 413 let's see big cool flash on page 4572 let's see let's see Oh, I can go to you. are making me wait for the 413. The Flash is a good ending point? Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Because sometimes the Flashes are not good ending points. They're cool, but, like, ending at a good place is a good is a good thing. After an insane, full-blown whirlwind of free will up in here, you are ready to get off on this roller coaster idea of absolute empowerment. You are, you are feeling downright dizzy from the absurd amount of decisive auto-volition heaped upon you, and while you are more than ready to proceed linearly for a while... You are now Jane. A robot shaped like a bunny has just handed you the reins to a computer shaped like a man. What will you do? Pester the shades. Are you ready to do this thing? Yes. Okay, it looks like that's all that's left is to play this pre-punched card, and then I guess it's all up to you. Oh, wait, it's, it's Roxy again. Is it? How totally unanticipated by anyone. Can you hold on? I'm gonna, I'll try to make it quick. Go, I'll be here. Quietly calculating. Answer Roxy. Oh, God, it's long. Alert! 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 Huge important correspondence paging, Dr. Crocker. Roll out a croc. <laughs> paging. But you would like to get paged, huh, <laughs> Jay? Oh, my God. Who? 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 Sweet innuendo. I'm not sure that qualifies as an innuendo at all. Wonk, 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 wonk. I honestly think you misspell things intentionally more often than not, regardless of blood alcohol content. You just typed wonk five times in a row. I only just, just begun to wonk. What is the urgent thing about anyway? Is it your about your booby trap? Because you're too late. I, I already blew the whole thing on my bedroom. Thank you very much. No, no, no. I mean, I feel shitty about it, but it's not about that. I know you already ran it. I've been talking to Shades. Yeah, me too. And right now, in fact, and I'm in a bit of a hurry. What is this about? What are you even doing? I'm in my lab doing a thing with my cat, but that doesn't matter because I was doing some thinking and I'm still feeling guilty about fucking up your computer and all kinds of stuff that I'm still in B BFF till death mode here. So you gotta you gotta tell me something you need before it's too late. Before what's too late? You and Jake hooking up, stupid? Oh my god. This is about turning all your steamy dreams into steamy realities. Realities, lol. This isn't happening now. Whereas JC plus JE kiss and hugs loads start turning out to be a huge heap of wrigglers the old-fashioned way. I can't decide whether this mental image pro uh, porlocating in here is hot as shit or cute as fuck. No, cease your levicious poor collating at once. Roxy, I can't. I can see you're set on just wasting more of my time. I understand if you don't wish to play this game, but please sure try not to interfere with those of us who do. No, 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 I'm fine with playing it. Just shut up. This is serious. You need to tell him how you feel very soon, or you might miss your chance. My chance? What are you talking about? I found out today that Dirk's going to make a move. A move? You mean a romantic one? Yes. On you? Oh, my fucking God. No, no. Jane, get a clue. Um, on me? No! No, my dear sweet Janie, not on you, on Jake! Oh. Oh! I didn't think that... Hmm. Hmm. Are you sure? Look at the image? Sure. I'll look at the image. Hello. Oh, God, the wink! The wonk! The wonk is strong! The wonk is very strong! This, 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 this douchebag, who is he? Jane, please? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Pretty sure ask glasses if you want. Well then, this is quite a development. Poor Dirk. What do you mean? Well, surely when he reveals his feelings, Jake will... I mean, he couldn't possibly. What? Reciprocate? Yes. Why not? Because Jake is not a homosexual. That is a callback. Mm, 
are you sure? Are you saying he is? Nope. Then what are you saying? I'm saying I don't fucking know. But I thought it's reasonable to presume he takes a shiny to ladies. He does speak so fondly of certain females from his favorite films, does he not? True that, but how much does that really mean here, Jane? Can you really be toad sure on any accounts, uh, be toad sure on account of a dorky movie crush? Besides, you could also be bi. Well, I don't, I don't know. You have me completely bamboozled about this. What do you think? All I'm saying is, my gaydar is like the exact fucking opposite of yours, which is to say, better than completely non-existent. Mine is so sensitive it has been used to sweep the ocean floor for mythical sea monsters. Turns out, all those monsters are so gay. Truth. Okay, so what does your cute CB scanner make of Jake, then? That's what I'm saying. I really have no idea. The kid is a goddamn enigma. He's as hard to read as fine print, and I do mean fine. <laughs> Oh, brother, then your guess is as good as mine. I'm not sure what I'm supposed to conclude from this. You're supposed to conclude that you said you were going to believe anything I said today, remember? Yes, but you just said you don't know. Exactly! Therefore, you must believe me when I say, if Dirk lets on his feelings, there is at least a chance Jake will go, like, Derp, okay, dude, let's make out! And that means poor Jane is screwed without ever throwing her filthy old fedora in the ring. It is a ring I like to call the old English sweepstakes. If you, and if you don't, you'll regret it. I mean, officially, I can't have a horse in this race. Wait, bad metaphor, uh, uh, because of Dirk and his fucking horse tastes. Like, like you are both my friends, and I'm not out to mess him up or anything, but I kind of owe it to you as my friend to let you know what's up, and also to get you to stop being such a word, world champion tight ass, and let Jake know. Let's see. It's Fred Astaire? Gotcha. The beans have been spilled. Glove Glove Gay confirmed. Yeah, Glove Glove is in fact the big gay. Yes. <laughs> gay sea creatures are best sea creatures. Oh, not this tight ass baloney again. Jane. What? Jane. You j just say, just because you are you are the tightest ass tight ass who has ever tightened an ass. No way. Or oh, Jesus Christ, you're an, you, you are. No way, we settled this, remember? My prior resolution made it definitive. I was to be regarded as exceedingly permissive in certain respects. Jane, I am afraid that your bottom is a stubborn clam, guarding priceless treasure and a deadly secret. So ridiculous. I'm not saying because be I'm not saying be an idiot and start gushing at him or incoherently, but do something. Say how you feel, or flirt a bit, or ask him out on a date inside the fucking game or such. Goddamn anything other than a bunch of bullshitty pining and tight assy nothing. You have to do what what I say, you promise. I promise to believe what you say, not do it. Those two things are pres 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 believe the same shit. If I agree to say something, we stop tormenting me about it. Yes, but only because that will be impossible for me to do when you and him are snog and hard in a motherfucking makeout paradise, a.k.a. sex land. Fine, but let the record show that this resolution has absolutely nothing whatsoever to do with your use of the phrase sex land. Just, I need to think of what to say and wait for the right moment. Is that okay? Sure, just don't wait too long. And don't underestimate Strider's wiles, nor Jake's, let's say, open-mindedness? Well, he does often profess his love for adventure, I suppose. Yep. Oh my god, I really don't have a moment to spare, do I? Yeah, you're finally getting it. Now go, and Jane, I'm warning you, if you don't say something to him, I am personally entering the game specifically to fuck your shit up. Lol, he's outie. <laughs> Sex land, guys. Roxy, Roxy, please stop. Yo, Roxy is being encouraging. So both Dirk and Jane hope to get paged. You right, though? <laughs> you right. Okay, Prince of Heart, rise up. Flash time. After that ridiculous bull honky. Prince of Heart. Ooh. Put that loud. Let me turn it down a bit. Strife! Why is it such a bop? Oh, little cow, please stop that shit. Why do you why are you always watching us? Oh, here we go. Time to look at the old gods. Yo! Jake English cast gun. <laughs> Yo, that throwback, though. Dirk. Dirk. Oh, that sends a message. That sends a fucking message. Yo, the Prince of Heart is fucking dropping the mic, and the mic is ahead. Oh no, the Tinker Bull. Stop killing the Tinker Bulls, you fool! 
Yo, Robot's an asshole. I guess Dirk Bot, I should say. Is this Metal Sonic? Yo. Dropping the fucking mic, Dirk. Like a badass. Look at that procession. Oh. The Condes! Hello. Cool. Cool. Oh, God. The Condes is running uh, Durs. Okay. The Condes is running Durs remotely. New management. Yeah, that makes sense. Because I didn't mention her before. But that's kind of what I thought. Whoa, what a fucking... What a fucking screen cap there with the flag. Apparently Jake English does not have eyes. If they, if they get slapped off. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. I saw this seismic toss in Pokemon. Wasted. Oh shit. DD. Oh, my headset's dying. Oh no. Whoa, that's just rude. <laughs> Your prince is the prince is awake. Your shit is awake. Let's go. Let's go. Dirk being the coolest. Whoa. Ho. Oh. The head on a stick with a sound effect was a reference in REA. Gotcha. Jake may not be all about his chances on this one. Oh, woo! If Prince is awake, your shit is wrecked. Love him, rate him. Uh, Dirk, Dirk Strider gets things done. Or Dick Ryder gets things done. Woo! That was a good flash, guys. Let me record the page that we are on for next week. 4572. Uh, partway through Act 6, Act 2. Awesome stream. Bye. I'm glad you guys had fun. Thank you for joining me for the stream. Thank you so much. But go drop follows if you like if you like what she does. Like have a lot of fun and we'll go say hi to Jade. But uh, here we go.